Greetings, folks, and welcome to Channel Other Doc. I am Jim. I use he, him pronouns. And today we are playing 50 Fathoms, a high fantasy game for Savage Worlds, heavily influenced by the pirate genre. Uh, I'm only an hour and a half late, but we're moving fast. Um, <laughs> so, sadly, sadly, technical things got at me, and then life things got at me, and so these things happen. But anyway, enough of that. Enough of this fall they're all. Let us actually play a game. Um, we shall go around and introduce everyone. Uh, feel free to say who you are and who you're playing, and uh, we'll go from there. I'm going to start with Jillian. Hello! Hello! My name is Jillian, also known as G4GamingX on Twitter and G4Gaming1 on Twitch. <laughs> My pronouns are she, her, and today I'm going to be playing Priscilla. Our, uh, if I can get this up real quick, oh, our Massaquani shipmate. I utterly forgot that second eye. My apologies. <laughs> it's so <laughs> good. It's too late now. It's too late now. <laughs> it's not, but, yeah, it's uh, too late now. But remind me, I may, I might try to sneak it in on the break. Uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> the other eye is a little behind. It'll catch up. Um, awesome. Yes. Um, and. Uh, now, uh, hi, Ozzy. <laughs> Good evening. Um, I'm Ozzy. I use he, him pronouns, and I will be playing um, Magista Qualos, who is the ship's mage. He's a kraken. And their pronouns are they, them. Yes. Uh, by way of explanation, uh, the, the Masquani are, are very near human inhabitants of, uh, an, uh, of this, this world, uh, which is called Charybdis. Um, they're, they're like humans, but slightly exaggerated in certain ways. Um, aside from that, very much like humans. Kraken, in this case, we're not referring to a giant thing in the ocean. We're referring to things that look actually a lot more like Cthulhu, basically. Or mind flayers, one might say. But they're actually, uh, decent folk in this world. Um, let us move well, on. Well, Warren, if you play, you know, your Star Wars aliens. <clears throat> there we go. Let us move on to Anino. Hello! Hey, how's it going? Uh, my name's Anino, and I'm playing the half Ugak. Ugak? Ugak? How do you pronounce that? Uh, we'll go either way. Ugak. Is Ugak. Good. Um, character. Uh, Queequeg. He's good with harpoons. I can't imagine. The, where, 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 where do you get these concepts? Where, where did I get so this original. from? I have no idea. <laughs> I know, right? yeah. so, sadly. Sadly, this is a case where I, too, am a fan of the source material, so I was a co-conspirator in this case. Um. <laughs> <laughs> like, Jim, I want to play Queequeg. I got you. <laughs> okay, yes. <laughs> 50 Fathoms has a, an edge you can take that lets you wield large weapons one-handed. So we're, we're doing this. <laughs> and, there, and, and harpoons are in the equipment list, so there we are. Hi, Rock. <laughs> You are muted, sir. I'm Rock, and uh, he, him pronouns, and I will be playing the assistant to the ship's doctor, Armand Orlean. Excellent. Excellent. And new face on the channel, Mira. Hello. Hi. <laughs> I'm Mira. Um, I use she, her pronouns, and so does my character. <laughs> I'm going to be playing the character of court um the doreen sailor and doreen's are like dolphin people and i'm so excited for that particular mechanic um she is uh really cool i'm excited excellent excellent <laughs> i was wondering if anyone was going to take that character and we'll find out we'll find out why i why i'm excited about it soon probably um <laughs> i have a feeling i know why <laughs> <laughs> we shall see. We shall see. Um, but uh, <laughs> and uh, finally, Levi. Hello. Hello. I am Levi. I use the pronouns, and today I will be playing Foreign Frey, a Masakwani former pirate who uses they them pronouns. Awesome. Excellent. Oh, well, thank you all. Uh, they're, they're actually as a quick question. Yes, we actually do have a human on the crew. That's uh, that's being played by Rock. Uh, humans do exist, but they, uh, they, since sort of this, well, I'll get into that in a moment. 
Uh, they're not native to this world, but they show up from time to time. So, before we get into that, like we do with most games on this channel, we're going to be using the X card, the N card, and the O card. If we hit something that's crossing a line for one of us, any of us can type an X in the Zoom video chat or anywhere else or make an X symbol, and we'll back up and we'll do something else. If something happens that we're okay having in the game, but we don't want a graphic description of it, we can type an N in the Zoom video chat and we'll fade to black on it or we'll put it behind a veil. So it'll be there, but we won't go into detail. Finally, if we're exploring a topic or an area of roleplay that's particularly intense for us, but we want to keep going anyway, uh, we can put an O in the chat to let us know that we're okay and that we're all good to keep piling on the drama. Uh, something else we can do is put an O with a question mark after it uh, when we're moving into a difficult topic or we say or we do something and then think, maybe that might have been a little too much. Uh, then everyone, everyone else can respond, again, with an X, an N, or an O to let us know if we're still doing okay. And that's where we are. So, we have uh, 50 Fathoms uh, is uh, an interesting setting. Basically, 13 years ago, um, the sea hags arose. They, uh, they're, they're, apparently, there were three witches that were, uh, that were executed, and as they did so, they called upon... They called upon dark forces, and uh, it rained for a very, very long time, uh, burying, uh, burying most of the continent uh, under 50 fathoms of water, ultimately. Um, then the, the sea hags arose, resurrected to uh, reach <coughs> Um That was, uh, again, 13 years ago. At that same time, uh, these... Uh, Mysterious storms were always uh, always happening, sort of near the near the middle of the of the map of this world now. Uh, that would started drawing in ships from another world. Uh, that other world being Earth, and the ships being from time periods anywhere from the uh, let's see, the, I think they they went from the 1400s through the early 1800s. Um, they just sort of get drawn in, and so lots of folks from Earth are here. Now they have uh, tried to do their best setting things up uh, as, as, they, as they might. Um, but where are you folks? You folks are in a tavern. Uh, because, of course you are. Um, it's basically one of those cases where you just sort of, let me turn on the people. That would be helpful if there were people in the tavern. Um, ah, obviously I can't hear the people, but that's okay. Um, this is one of those cases where we have, uh, you're on an island that was inhabited largely uh, by folks, refugees from uh, Spain and Italy coming through. Um, the, uh, the, island, uh, is, uh, the island is, uh, is unfortunately, the, the name's like uh, escaping me. It's right in front of me, unfortunately, but I can't grab it. Um, it is Sprith, that's the name of the island. Um, and you are at uh, the port on the uh, sort of the north northmost part of the island, sort of around the corner from New Madrid, uh, a smaller city called uh, Marsales or Marseilles, depending on which side of the room you're standing. Um, and uh, it's basically sort of folks think of it as kind of a a back doorway into uh, be able to do business with the uh, the Spanish Guild. Uh, who have established themselves here. Um, they're one of three main forces in this world now that uh, are powerful enough to try to, uh, to, try to enforce uh, uh, sort of laws over the sea as best they can. Um, you have the Spanish Guild, you have the East India Company, oh yes, they're here too, and the Kiran Empire, which uh, was one of the only two empires le <laughs> was There were two empires, then the rain happened, then there was one empire, that was the Kiran Empire. Um, folks, uh, it's Masquani, they're native to this uh, place, and they are, they want to, uh, to keep out the folks they want to keep out. I'll just put it that way. Um, but uh, at this point, so we're on sort of the western side of, of the world of Charybdis. Um, it's where this island is perched. Um, a lot of business is done here when it's like you need to hook up with legitimate folks and possibly illegitimate folks, sort of bit of both. You need to do it a little bit under the radar, but still in a place that's considered legal. You come here. Um, our crew 
the crew of the Dauntless, uh, which is a, uh, a frigate-sized, uh, mostly uh, vessel, mostly used for salvage. It's only got about a dozen crew members. This is half the crew, um, and uh, they, they're finally getting out and trying to do a bit of carousing, trying to get out and, uh, and just sort of relax a bit. Uh, you're in a, uh, a tavern that has a not incredibly great reputation, but then again, you know, why go for the one with the good reputation? The Diablo Loco. Um, this is one of the places, folks, apparently this is the place to be if you want to hear rumors or just kind of uh, get into any manner of thing. So, as you folks are kind of hanging out here, you have uh, you have this tavern. It's a two-story uh, two-story tavern. No one is allowed to go up into the rooms above, uh, you know, up in the second floor. Um, there's a bit of dan there's dancing and singing going on, all manner of things like that. But uh, mostly it's uh, mostly it's people drinking, arm wrestling, things of that nature. Also drinking, also playing cards. Also drinking, also playing dice. Possibly also drinking. I don't know if I mentioned that. Um, there's a significant amount of uh, alcohol here. Um, your captain, uh, very, very, very tired and weathered uh, that he is. Old Tom Dragon is basically uh, has uh, bribed the harbor master as necessary for the various. To, to get the, the, the bits of salvage through. You're trying to do legitimate salvage. You're trying to do bits of privateering if you can. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> there's only so much you can do. Um, I'd like to go around and say, uh, let me know what your character, describe what your character looks like and what your character can currently be seen doing. And I'm going to go around the same order. Um, I'll start with Priscilla. Alright, so Priscilla, as you know, is a Masaquani, so she does have those human s features, like, like she, like, for, if you if you see her from far, you could almost tell that she's human, but then as you get a more closer look, you see like bits of parts of her skin have like fish scales, I believe, like some some bright gold fish scales that are. Are on patches across her body and bits of her face. She has she has long red hair that's currently like braided up right now, wearing wearing her like her more comfortable traveling clothes as she's just like just sitting in the tavern, just having a drink. Awesome. So you're just sort of, are you sitting and chatting with anybody, or are you just basically just sitting and drinking alone? Um, I guess I'd just be, like, sitting with the crew currently, just, uh, just awesome. having a small chat. Excellent. Okay. Um, let's uh, move over to Ozzy. What do we, uh, we, we see Magister Qualus. What do we see? Magister Qualus is a tall kraken, a uh, grayish blue skin, wiggly face tentacles wearing a um a um a cobalt blue uh set of robes um with, with huge um sleeves and he's um sitting on the in the corner uh on the edge rather of the crew table uh, occasionally sipping from a cup of pressed sea anemone juice or whatever the uh, the thing is um, um, crack and drink and um, he's they are they are watching uh, more than participating yeah. I'm gonna say you uh, actually have been waiting for somebody um, who has. Oh, not yeah. turned... That's why I'm. Yeah. That's why I'm watching. <laughs> this person has not turned up yet, and actually, you would think that she'd have arrived by now. Mm -hmm. um, so you're not entirely sure what the deal is. Um, 
Yes, Are there is... any other Kraken in this place at the moment? Oh, that is an excellent question. Um, which I'm going to decide <laughs> utterly randomly. Uh, actually, no, not utterly randomly. I'm going to have you make a notice <laughs> for me, please. Uh, oh, first roll of an evening! So just click on your notice and we will see what it says. Let me check that this actually works. Okay. So uh, you got, that's a seven. Yep. Yeah. Um, so you got a seven. The the wild die is lower, so we ignore that. Um, we take whichever of the two is the highest. Um, and uh, in, in here in Savage Worlds, um, yeah, you're looking around. Kraken are rare, uh, so not that many. Um, you do see um, there is that. Um, it looks as though there is one in the in the corner, kind of arguing right now with the uh, with uh, a local surgeon you folks are uh, are familiar with. Sometimes they come and they actually have served on your boat before, um, but uh, the uh, not uh, uh, fracas they, they they call them uh, they they're, they're called, um, and uh, apparently they're talking to a kraken right now. They're actually. They're actually doing something. The Kraken is, is sit, sitting down, and they've they've got their um, they they have so many hands. Uh, yeah, uh, I should point out that uh, what I'm actually talking about when I tell you the, it's a Skrillian. So Skrillians are basically big hyper intelligent crabs, um, giant crabs, and so it's basically they got pincers, but he's also got uh, more sort of manipulable hands. Um, he's doing something. Uh, next to the uh, next to this kraken who is seated, and it's just basically, you know, there's some sort of argument going on. Um, but before we do anything else, we're going to move over to introduce everyone else, and uh, we're going. And uh, so, Queequeg, what what do we see? What is Queequeg doing? So, uh, Queequeg is uh, a bit of a hulking figure. Um, he is not wearing a shirt, but you see he's got uh, Maori-inspired tattoos along half of his face, and that comes down across his, uh, down to his body and across his shoulders and down his arms. But it's only on on one half. Um, he's not wearing a shirt. He's wearing um, jorts. Um, I don't know where he got the jorts, but uh, you know that that's just what he's wearing. But he's also wearing a top hat, and. Uh, you know, the top hat has um, like a monocle um, sort of just uh, resting on the brim and then a bunch of uh, random like teeth just sort of like around the, uh, you know, around the base of the top hat. And uh, right now he's actually uh, refereeing the arm wrestling matches um, uh, and, you know, just making a little extra money, taking a little Brilliant. bit of cut. Here. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. This is a this is a thing that is happening. Um, <laughs> there is a lot of arm wrestling going around along, uh, going around right now. Some of your crew is getting involved. Um, let's uh, move over though to uh, Ormond. What uh, what does Ormond look like? What do we see Ormond doing? Um, <clears throat> so Ormond is of average height. For a human, um, and unlike me, he has darker hair. Um, betraying his slightly French origins, um, and he is kind of sitting off to the side. He's enjoying a drink, watching the crowd, um, waiting. I imagine waiting to uh, to meet up with his. His, his cousin, who showed up two years earlier. Hmm. You remind us your, uh, let's see, remind us your cousin's name? Uh, Hubert. Okay. All right. Cool, cool. Excellent, excellent. Okay. There we go. 
Yeah. Um, Hubert is uh, Hubert has not shown up yet, but is quite possibly um, uh, quite possibly going to. Um, <laughs> have to see kind of what's what's going on with uh, with Hubert. Um, let's see. Okay. So I'll make sure I've noted it down. There we go. All right. Let's see. Uh, let's move over to Court. What does uh, Court look like, and what do we see Court doing? Yeah. Um, so Court is about average height. Um, she's got the blue-gray skin of her people, um, of the Doreen, uh, and kind of longish hair, but you can't really tell how long it is because it's all dreaded and braided very carefully. Um, she dresses <clears throat> like a swashbuckler, um, with the really low cut shirt and everything like that, but instead of like a bunch of skin being exposed and tantalizing, it's a bunch of different layered necklaces of shells and little bits that she's found along her travels. Um, and she's just kind of like scowling around the entire uh, tavern, and she actually does notice Fracas and starts to move over towards uh, them because she knows Fracas. Excellent. Yeah, you're heading. Uh, you're heading in that direction. You see, basically, that they're. Um, they seem to be stitching up a wound in the. Uh, in the side of. Uh, of this kraken that's uh, that's sitting in the corner, um, but let's uh, move over. Once uh, once more to. Uh, Fort. I can't read my own uh, my my own font writing. Uh, <laughs> let's move over to Levi. Tell us about your character and what they look like. <laughs> Uh, Forlin appears to be a, well, they're a Masakwani, kind of very, uh, a uh, very narrow frame, kind of portraying how nimble they're capable of being. Uh, this kind of shock of teal hair. Uh, they're actually on the young side, but looking at them, you think that they are a 30-year-old, chapter 19-year-old body, and, uh... Also dressed in a very, like, plain sailor garb, like, vest, uh, loose pants, and, like, just, and they just kind of try to keep the vest so positioned that you, you can't quite see the brand of, th that is pressed into their collarbone, and right now they're probably engaging in, uh, one of the, uh, arm wrestling, arm wrestling matches, the opponent's arm in one hand, a tanker in the other. Excellent. <laughs> um, <clears throat> right now, your uh, your friend Co uh, your friend Cosima is actually here as well, um, yeah. and she's uh, she's been uh, betting heavily. Whether <laughs> on you or against you, you're not sure. It sort of depends on when in the evening it is. Um, <laughs> she's just sort of watching. <laughs> Don't let me down. Don't let me down. <laughs> um, okay. So, um, this is this is where you find yourselves, um, as uh, as we we sort of looking at this scene, all just manner of uh, tomfoolery happening, um, and uh, so I will say briefly uh, that, uh, yeah, um, uh, Qualis, you see Court head over and begin talking to, uh, begin talking to Fracas. Um, and there's working on the, uh, working on that other, uh, uh, working on that other Kraken in the corner. Um, and, uh, basically, uh, do, do you head over there or are you going to just sort of, sort of hang out where you are? I'm going. I'm going to go see my, my friend. Oh yeah, yeah. But uh, Magister, do you also uh, do you also head over there? Or are you hanging out? Oh, sorry. Magister is drinking. Okay. Is that... <laughs> <laughs> Magister Qualis apparently is drinking and just watching it carefully. Um, let's see. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So Queequeg is sort of close to where Forlin is. Forlin, I, I actually would like you to uh, Forlin. I need you to make a strength roll for me here because I would like to see how you are doing. All right, just uh, flat strength. Uh, uh, we could go with athletics, actually, for this. Go ahead and roll athletics. 
Uh, not sure good go strength, because that's slightly higher. Uh, yeah, go ahead and do it, roll strength. All right. Okay. Yeah. So, apparently, uh, there is, uh, so, so uh, apparently you're, uh, 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 you, you are winning, uh, which is very good, um, because uh, Kosima now is cheering out, having bet on you uh, heavily in the last, uh, <laughs> that last round. Um, and she's like, I think I'm going to, I, I think I'm going to probably have to cash out at this point. I don't know if your arm can take anymore. <laughs> All right, so... I still got a few in me. <laughs> she just sort of glances up at uh, at Queequeg, just kind of like just sort of shaking her head. <laughs> um, Court, you are uh, you are talking to um, you're, you're talking to Fracas, who's just basically been just sort of going. Just, just going at it. Now, if you don't hold still, I cannot finish this. I could just let you bleed if you would like. Would you prefer that? <laughs> well, I wouldn't doubt it. Hello, Fracas. <laughs> yeah, waves. Uh, uh, sort of turns his uh, one of his uh, one of his pincers and sort of waves at you with it. Uh, uh, I, I see that you survive still. Barely, but here we are. Despite my warnings, you survive. <laughs> You're always here to stitch me up, Fracas. Why would I even bother to try and dodge all of the attacks? You know, I understand that the visitors have this expression called taking things for granted. I would recommend you not do so, as I do not know how much longer I'm going to be able to be here. I'm not going to be here forever, you know. I'm not young. Don't say that, Fracas. You're going to live forever. The Kraken just sort of, sort of glances down at Fracas and just sort of like just <laughs> shrugs their shoulder. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe not. Depends on if the things get to. Um, I am going to note that uh, Priscilla and. Uh, and Qualys and Ormond in particular are going to notice this, as you're not as deeply engaged in things that are going on. Um, that uh, you start to hear kind of like a, a, a... There's kind of like some commotion from sort of a distance. It's hard. It's like there's, there's like shouting of many voices from far outside of the, uh, of the tavern somewhere. Um, and uh, I'm going to say that it is more or less at this point um, that, um, yeah. Uh, Qualys, as you are, uh, as you were perhaps just uh, sort, of, sort, of, sort of standing up to get a better sort of uh, gauge on things that were going on, you see uh, your friend Aranis uh, come in. She is uh, just sort of dashing in through the uh, th through one of the doors of the tavern. She's just sort of looking around. She spots you and she's making a beeline for you right now. Um, Ozzy, can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Okay, sorry? good, good. She's making a beeline for you. Your friend, your 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 friend. Oh, your right. Sorry. Um, a for you. I had name disassociation. Yes, yes. Uh, I, there was a... I, you did not give me a name, so I have named her. <laughs> right. All right. Uh, her, um, name, her name is Aranis. Aranis, uh, right. She's, uh, she's running straight at you right now. I stand up. And she's like... She, she sort What's of, going on? Uh, runs up. Call, 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 call. Okay. Are you, uh, okay well, uh, so, I assume you'll be thing. wobbling in Kraken? Uh... So the 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 uh, I don't know exactly what's happening, but the the hmm? she just sort of points back. Can you hear me? Her. Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay. Good. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Cool. Cool. Awesome. But what I said was, uh, I assume we'll be grumbling in Clapham, so few people will understand us. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Especially yeah. as it's agitated. So. Yeah. 
Yeah, she, Makes probably she, more sense that she is using her native language. Yeah, she's coming forward. So there's lots of bubbles and there is a there is an issue. Um, basically, <laughs> she says something has gone amiss recently. The Don's people are out; they're all over the place. Uh, and uh, this is uh, for uh, out, out from the uh, out from the villa of uh, of Don Mendoza. Uh, I think that. I know he was, he was, I had, I was coming to tell you that he had put a word out that he was looking to hire uh, people for, to recovery, to recover something. I suspect it is an artifact, mm -hmm. but uh, it seems there is, that there is something has occurred. And I do not know what. So his people are out to look for someone or There's, something. Yes, there, it seems that they are perhaps uh, uh, hunting someone. It is hard to it is hard to say. Hunting someone. Um, mm -hmm. um, and uh, actually, more or less at this point, you are also here. Here it says it seems that there is a disturbance at at his menagerie. At his menagerie. And everyone hears this know kind about, of. Mm -hmm. What do I know more about the Don's menagerie? Uh, actually, do a general knowledge, uh, a, a common knowledge roll for me. Mm hmm. That's a um, five. So, yeah, Don Mendoza has a uh, has a pretty big uh, menagerie of creatures from a lot of different areas. A lot of the creatures are local in it. Um, his own sort of private kind of petting zoo type deal thing, basically. Perhaps a little more dangerous than a petting zoo. Um, but <laughs> it's uh, half of it is sort of an aquarium. As uh, you're starting to hear, everyone is starting to hear this kind of like the, the commotion is getting closer, and then these these sort of these things that sound kind of like screams, like yells, um, but they they sound a little weird. Um, they're very much sort of a ah, 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 type deal is going on um, outside, and uh, there, there are a lot of a lot of screams, very much like that, that are happening, um, and so it's, it's sort of drowning out the, the the even even the musicians are taking notice, for as you know they have stopped playing. Um, is this a, so a horde of monkeys? Do you wish to uh, do you wish to go out and take a look? Um, what? Uh, what kind of windows does the tavern have? Round ones. They're shaped like portholes. It's a theme. <laughs> so not very big either, then. Not huge, but you can, you know, you can look through. Uh, I will definitely not go outside, but rather look through a porthole. All right. Yes, there is. There is some. Uh, there is some commotion. You go up. You're looking around. Um, so Do we everyone... all hear this? Yeah, everyone hears this. Now. Is, is anyone else going and looking, or is everyone else pretty much just trying to... Okay. I think Court would. Okay. You're probably going to turn away. Yeah, I, I'll probably take a look as well. Everyone who's checking it out, please make notice rolls for me. Okay. Yeah. Just click on your notice. <clears throat> okay. Remember, you're taking whichever of the, di of, of the two dice you're rolling uh, is higher, ends up higher. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, Priscilla got a raise because you got uh, four over four. Ormond is going to be distracted by something. I will tell. I will tell you what you are distracted by in just a moment. Um, and uh, let's see. So yeah, everyone else. Uh, Priscilla, uh, Priscilla, you are the first to notice this. You do see. These creatures that are sort of, some of them are swinging through the trees near the uh, near the edge of the uh, near the edge of town, and a few more and several more are sort of running through, uh, hitting citizens, biting citizens. Um, these are uh, and everyone else is going to everyone else hears them and then uh, you can sort of you can make out some outlines of them um, as they're coming by. Uh, these are monk apes, uh, sort of described as, um, 
about the size of baboons, very aggressive. Um, very, uh, very kind of, uh, sort of look like that. Um, and uh, they're, they're just basically cool. sort of swinging through. And a few of them appear to be coming toward the tavern. Uh-oh. <laughs> and I'm just going to go around briefly. We're not going to go into combat rounds uh, specifically for this. But I just sort of want to know, uh, as, as a... I notice there's just sort of this bang at the front door. And then a second bang. And then a third bang. And before the door flies open and the thing that is behind it comes in... Uh, the thing behind it being a small flood of monk apes. Um, <laughs> I just want to know how everyone is weathering this particular, this flood. Uh, so I'm going to go around and just ask, ask you to tell me one, just tell me in general what you are doing, and I may have you make a roll um, as we go around. Um, I'm actually going to start uh, with Court. What are you doing? I am... Uh probably pulling out my bow and readying, like, bracing. Because I, I saw something. I didn't see as much as she did, right? Yeah, you, you, you saw... You could tell that they're, you tell they're probably... <coughs> everyone can tell these are probably monk apes, maybe. Uh, or they're, they're mm -hmm. simians at the very least. Um, right. So, <laughs> that's... Uh, you weren't able to see, see them as clear. You're not as ready, but you can still do a thing. Yeah, I want to just kind of be ready for whatever comes through the door mm -hmm. and just, like... Be so, ready to attack. So these things have started basically... Yes, the thing... Do door bursts open, and a bunch of these things are now like... Aah! Just coming through, starting to grab plates and smash them and such. Um, so uh, I'd like you to make a, uh, a shooting roll for me, just to give us a general idea of how well you do uh, no. defending against these things. And Don't you, shoot them. If you want to shoot them. Oh boy, I was primed and ready though. She would have shot them. Make shooting. I clicked roll. the button. Oh, that's great. You did a great job of shooting there. Okay, so um Yay! Eight, twelve. So that's three raises, yeah. Um so you basically um are, are wielding this bow in uh, uh, um uh, an almost uh Legolasian fashion. Um as uh, you're sort of uh, is there a, uh, is there, so what, what particularly cool looking thing do you do as these things are attacking? <laughs> um, I think she's like kind of full on Hawkeyeing it, mm -hmm. just like getting things and like shooting and then turning. And it's just, it's very much so like that scene where he shoots and then it, he's not even looking. Excellent. Um, so that's what you are doing. Um, Forlan. Uh, so yeah, there are a bunch of these things. They they have they have run in. Uh, they appear to they they seem to be interrupting the arm wrestling competition, which is is not cool. Um, but uh, what would you like to do? Yeah, probably turn to uh, Kosima and whoever I was arm wrestling and just get down. Then uh, draw draw my rapier and just get ready to uh, take a swipe at it, at okay. any of that are nearby. All right. Get you close. So a few of them are starting to like kind of come closer. Go ahead and make a fighting roll for me. Ah, seven. Excellent. So, yeah. Okay, so you do a decent enough job of being able to kind of fend them off as they're they're kind of coming around maybe to the other side. If it's a sort of a long table that the sort of these arm yeah. wrestling competition was set up at, I imagine people just sitting across from each other in this line. And uh, so they managed to keep them off the table uh, as they are uh, sort of running through. Um, I'm going to uh, move around now. Uh, since we're actually there narratively, I'm going to move around to Queequeg. Um, and uh, I want to. Uh, you, you see these 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 monk apes are like uh, just sort of going crazy. They're picking up things and throwing them at people. Um, what would you like to do? So Queequeg is just super excited. He's like, "Yeah, a monkey bar fight!" And uh, he's going to grab. <laughs> He's going to grab two of the monkeys, uh, one in each hand, and then he's going to do that thing where he slides them across the surface of the bar. 
and crash them through as many plates as possible. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, um, I'm gonna We're gonna call owe that... them so much money to replace all of those dishes. It's true. I'm gonna call that athletics. <laughs> you should have a pretty good athletics because yeah. that's, that's the thing you use to throw things with. Okay. Yeah, it's just decent. You pull it off. Then you just go tumbling off the end of the bar, sort of, uh, barring others, and it actually, uh, down to the end of the front door, and they sort of are stumbling, and the, the front door ends up slamming shut. Uh, as kind of a result, there's uh, one of them sort of bumps into it, and they're now sort of, a uh, bunch of them now sort of trying to get around to other places in the room. Uh, Priscilla, uh, what would you like to do? As all this chaos is going on, she's gonna take out her, uh, her cutlass, and it's just gonna look over at the. Is the other members of the crew are here as well from the ship, or is it just the six of us? Um, it's uh, there are some other crew members here, yeah. Most of the rest of the crew is here. Yeah, so I'm just gonna look at the rest of the crew that are just standing there in shock, and I, as I'm taking out my uh, my cutlass, I'm just gonna go, Oi, you nimwits! Get your asses out of your chest and help us out here! Excellent. Yeah, I mean, the captain's not here, so you're in charge. Yeah, I'm um, in charge! So, let's see. Uh, I think we're going to have you roll. <laughs> uh, go ahead and roll persuasion for me, please. Alright. Okay, that's a success, so yes. they're like, they get up, they're like, ah, oh, crap. <laughs> they just get up and they yeah. to try to help. <laughs> <laughs> sort of stem the tide of these simians. Um, Qualys, you've been watching all of this. <laughs> just sort of calmly from the corner. And uh, all this time this has, this has been happening, uh, Qualys has been preparing a spell. And uh, they are going to wave the hands and give some thing you don't understand producing from their mouth. And uh, cast Beast Friend. And I'm trying to catch as many monkeys as I can with it. Awesome. Okay. So this would be a spell casting roll. Mm hmm. Hey, if I can get roll 20 to wake up. Here we go. Roll 20, wake up! We're all going to 19. Right oh, that's very good. Yeah. Okay. So, there is a point where basically you get... And I want to calm them down, basically. Yeah. You get basically, there are only like a handful of them left. Some of them have head, headed for the back door. And uh, some of them are... There, there are a couple like swinging off the chandelier. Um, and uh, there, are a, there are a couple just sort of still sort of sort of you know, hitting things on tables and they all kind of starting to calm down a little bit and they're just kind of like <laughs> you see they've got they've got the rage in them but they're still like they're, they're, they've calmed down a bit and they're going to uh, you're able to actually kind of guide them are you going to try to guide them outside or uh... Uh, yeah back to the cages okay so you have begun working on that um, everyone kind of, except for Orman, kind of notices that they are, uh, uh, being sort of led, uh, a little bit now, and it's like, okay, it looks like, so it looks like Qualys has gotten a handle on them. Um, and pretty much all the ones that were in here, because you got a freaking 19. Um, <laughs> Orman, as this was ensuing, um... And you were kind of, you, you went to look out a side door. Which was not the right door. But you did notice something. Um, it's basically a little road that leads uh, up toward the, uh, just up the hill toward a, um, uh, the, um, up toward the, um, these more sort of slightly, uh, the, toward the villas, basically, the sort of richer part of town. Um, and you kind of notice, you know, there were people running around, sort of, uh, uh, 
some uh, people. They don't look like city guards. They look more like sort of personal security uh, running around. And someone who kind of is, is looks like just sort of from behind a tree <laughs> is sort of popping their heads out. Their, he their heads. Their head out. Um, and uh, turning to look. And you see that it is your cousin. <laughs> you see that it is your cousin Hubert. And uh, they turn to you and they're, they're like, Okay. Um, Armand is going to uh, step out and go towards his cousin. And uh, you kind of, kind of, are getting up there in all the chaos. No one's noticing you. Um, and uh, he's like, hey, 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 hey! I got to show you something. I got to show you something. <clears throat> and uh, he's carrying a sack, and you see he's got like a couple of bottles of wine. Um. It, it looks like this actually looks like this is from um, these these are these are old, older vintages from Earth um, <laughs> that uh, <laughs> that uh, sort of left over. He's like, I got into his cellar. I was able to get into his cellar. There's a bunch more in there. With all of this distraction, we can go and lift a bunch of it if you want. You're gonna look back towards the tavern. None of the other, none of the rest of the crew were have have followed me, right? No, they have not. They are busy corralling a bunch of monk apes. Hmm. They don't you there. And so the two of you scurry off um, to the uh, to the wine cellar. Of, uh, of Don Mendoza. Um, we're going to... We're going to smash cut a little bit forward in time. <laughs> and... Uh, to, I've been to, passed out drunk on the floor. Well, well, we're going to underneath see... Underneath a barrel. Well, not yet. Soon. Um, we're going to see... Uh, that... Um, so... Did anyone, did the rest of the crew go with, now Qualis has kind of started wrangling these things, but cannot necessarily do everything themselves. Um, are mm. any of the rest of you going to accompany them to try to get these back to where they belong? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Probably. Qualis would yeah. definitely sort of usher them along. Okay. So, I'm not gonna let the rest of the crew just sit on their butts and do nothing. They're gonna help me out with this, whether they like it or not. Okay. Oh well, that answers the question then, basically. <laughs> everyone, that, everyone that you're able to muster, um, <clears throat> basically, is uh, is coming along to kind of there's sort of this like there's this parade of monk apes, basically back through the city, um, and. Um, and um, you uh, <coughs> go up the hill uh, to the uh, to the villa of uh, to, past the villa of uh, Don Mendoza, where they, you know he has this uh, sort of sort of broad area. His, his guards are like <sighs> <laughs> they open this gate for they, they they immediately they just turn they're opening this gate for you and they. And they're 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 just immediately. Uh, um, uh, no, thank you, Senor. Thank you. Uh, they're very much. Uh, and they 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 open these gates up, and uh, you're starting to everyone's starting to get these. Uh, these monk apes. These, these monk apes. Their apiary. Uh, of, of a sort, yeah. No, they, 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 they're not beekeepers. Uh, but, um, <laughs> they, uh... Well, it's their version of a monastery. You're getting them into their... You're getting back, them back into their monastery. Uh, is sort of, sort of getting them through these, sort of, these big gardens with, uh, with, with, uh, all manner of, sort of, odd-looking birds in them. Um, 
and uh, I think that um, if you will, uh, so after a few moments, and that is being taken care of, um, and the lights have been have come back on in the place, and uh, if there is the, a um, um, menagerie keeper, um, Gwalos will um, remonstrate them. So you should take better care of these creatures. I, 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 I've, I, was, I, I tried. To, someone, someone opened the, someone opened the gate. I don't know what happened. Um, no, no, no. If you take care of them properly, they wouldn't escape. They would be your friends. You're just keeping them as pets or something to look at. And mm. he just crosses his arms. In the middle of this conversation, one of the uh, one of the Don's aides will come up. Um, she'll come up and, and uh, she will uh, just sort of address. She'll, she'll looks looking at all of you. She's probably going to address this primarily to Priscilla. Uh, she's going to say, uh, Don Mendoza requests the pleasure of your company, uh, of those of you who, uh, of all of you who, to, uh, came to, uh, assist us in these matters. I'm sure we can, is and it can accept this invitation. And I look over to the others to see if they're, if anyone's going to come, because Priscilla's certainly going to come. She has to keep up those rep her reputation for the crew, her ship. Sure, I'll come. Uh, faster, uh, I'll, I'll follow. <laughs> Qu Quique was just going to take his monocle out of his top hat and put it on <laughs> for the occasion. Uh, it's like, okay, I'm ready. <laughs> awesome. They will lead you inside. Um, to, it's a very nice, it's a very nice villa. Very uh, sort of well appointed. It's almost, it's slightly just like a small castle, basically. Um, you know, there's very, very nice carpets uh, that you're all treading all over. Um, and you sort of come into his uh, into his dining hall, is where you're escorted, um, where he's sitting. And now I'm going to do something terrible, by which I mean I would like to uh, offer... Uh, I, and normally one doesn't use bennies this way in this system, but I've been corrupted by other systems. I would like to offer Ormond a Benny. Uh, everyone... Uh, Normally starts out with three, lest they have uh, other things going on. Uh, but I would like to offer Ormond a Benny in exchange for which I'm going to do a thing. <laughs> I'm listening. This seems like an apology, Benny. That's exactly what it is. This is a devil's bargain, basically. This is a devil's bargain where they have uh, where they have found you drinking in the cellar and they brought you up. <laughs> That's about what I figured. Oh. <clears throat> there you go. Okay. Answering answering the age old question, what do you do with a drunken sailor? Exactly. <laughs> what do you do with a drunken sailor? What do you do? I with hey drunken... look at this bad luck. I could not <laughs> <You're on land. laughs> refuse I, I could not refuse this opportunity. Everybody knows. If you want to have a party, you go to Hugh Arlene. Oh there you go. Oh dear. Oh, there it is. It's been said. It's it's the lamp, the lampshade has been hung. Let us uh, let us proceed. Um, <laughs> um, so uh, as we uh, as we head up, um, let me go ahead and uh, get over to a description of a thing. I just need to check. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yes, as you are, uh, I think I'm going to turn off the, t the, the, the people in the tavern now. You're not in the tavern anymore. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, they take you up. Uh, you know, they, they've kind of, they've, they've dragged, uh, Ormond, they've dragged you and your cousin up to, uh, uh and sort of as, uh, so this is kind of as everyone is coming into the room with uh, Don Mendoza. Don Mendoza is uh, sort of an older gentleman. He looks like he's in his fifties. He's got um, he's, he's 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 fairly attractive. He's, he's got uh, closely cropped hair. He has a mustache. Um, he stands up and he says, 
Uh, it is a pleasure. It, uh, um, it is. Uh, it was a pleasure to see that there could be. Uh, I, I was amazed that you were able to uh, wrangle my beast so quickly. I very much appreciate it. Of course. Um, and at this point, he says, well, "There is something I would like." And at this point, uh, well, first of all, he says, "I, I understand you. Uh, you do primarily salvage. Is that correct? If uh, my people tell me right." That is correct. Ah, very good, very good. Well, I have a possible proposition for you. At this point, uh, though, you hear some struggling, and uh, and a couple of guards bring in Ormond and uh, someone who looks slightly similar to Ormond, uh, <laughs> and throws them to the floor in front of them. <laughs> and uh, he's a, he's a, the Don just sort of looks up. He's like, he's like, and uh, the guard is uh, the guard says, "We found them in the wine cellar, sir." Closes his eyes for a second, reopens them, and just sort of gl glares down balefully at uh, at Orman and Hugh. I just like look. Mm. I'm just like glaring at Ormond right now. Like you could tell that she's now very pissed. At <laughs> she's not happy. <laughs> Court's just kind of standing there, similarly, just like done. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, just basically there's this there's this moment of silence, and um, sort of uh, sort of whisper, and one of the the the, the aide comes up and whispers in the Don's ear, and he looks over and he's like, "So this one says pointing to Hugh." was seen near the villa earlier this evening. Which one of you let the animals out? Just I'm just going to... Ormond's just going to, to turn to Hugh and, and be like... What? Hugh has like got the grin of fear. Is this about animals? He was just sort of looking at sort of grin of fear. He's like, well, there, was a, there was a need for a distraction to get at the wine. <laughs> Monsieur, my apologies. I told my cousin we were looking for celery. He found a cellar, but... Can I tell if uh, Armand is He's not lying? very smart. Can I tell if Armand I... is lying? I feel as though it does. It's not going to take much, um, but uh, <laughs> let's go ahead and engage with the system anyway. Um, <laughs> Ormond, roll persuasion for me. So the number to so the number to beat here is a four. If you would like to determine, using your notice, if this is a lie. Okay. I can do that. Or if you'd like to catch him in lying. It... Can I jump in on this too? Yes, anyone who's here may <laughs> yeah. make a notice roll to see if it seems as though he is <laughs> not telling the truth. <laughs> yeah. Seems perfectly Florian reasonable knows to everything. <laughs> yeah. Seems pretty, pretty reasonable to Qualis. Uh... Yeah, everyone else is kind of, uh, um, I'll say, uh, Priscilla, it's, it's, it's sort of on the fence. You probably don't believe him. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm, like, I'm going on the edge of like, no, no, I don't believe that whatsoever. Forlin knows immediately that this is a bald faced lie. <laughs> you, you know Ormond's tell and, uh, Ormond is, is doing his, his tell, whatever his tell is. Um, and, um. This is absolutely not the truth. Um, I guess I should probably roll to see if the Don notices, however. And uh, the Don is not completely sure. Um, <laughs> right. This is this is a Don that we're working with. Yes, this is a the the, the man who owns this villa is is a Don. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, and he, uh, he's like, okay. Monsieur, please allow me to apologize for my cousin's clumsy understanding of my instructions. You see, uh, I had heard that possibly you might have need of a crew and a ship. My, my cousin, he hears a lot of things, says a lot of things, doesn't always get it right. Anyways, I knew that our captain is notoriously difficult to negotiate with. So I figured if my cousin got into trouble, that would give you a position to dictate terms so that we could do a job for you, which would help improve our reputation and make us a shining example of the kind of people that can be hired in your town. You know, I was... I was just going to have you arrested, but this sounds like a much better idea. He's, uh, he just sort of is like, uh, yeah, you know, it's, uh, so your, your crew is your crew. Uh, yes, so uh, we're, we're the ones that are business affiliates of this one. Ah, interesting. So a problem was caused and then solved by potentially the same crew. All right. Well, you got my attention. Most definitely. And he just sort of, sort of he looks over and, uh, and he says, so... I think there is, uh, there is something, there is something that you can do for me that will pay back for the wine that you have taken and more. I'm just just going to look really at, uh, at Ormond because <laughs> I'm, yeah, she's a little so happy. There is a, uh, an item that, uh, I should like to have salvaged. There was a vessel that came through a few years back. It's called the Dawn Crusher. My understanding is it uh, is that uh, I've heard through various channels that that uh, it is found itself right near an island, uh, what remains of it, near an island, out uh, on the northernmost end of the Whip Islands. It's just a couple days sail from here. Does the Dawn Crusher sound familiar? Um, common, uh, if, you have a, if you have academics, you can use that, otherwise common knowledge will do. <clears throat> it's not great, but I can give it a go. Um, it is a, um, uh, you think it's actually a friendship? I can also uh, do a common knowledge roll too. Yeah. Yes. Everyone has common knowledge. <laughs> you would um, think. <laughs> My apologies. I should rephrase. In Savage Worlds, everyone has common knowledge. <laughs> nope. I don't know, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> Double one! Yeah. Oh dear, okay. Yeah. Um. Oh, but Master, Quail, Master Quail is it pretty good on his wild die. Ormond! <clears throat> Ormond's not uh. sure. Ormond's still drunk. <laughs> yeah. It was really good wine. It's really good. Um. So. <clears throat> and if <laughs> oh Forlan. Um oh. oh gosh. So yes, there are um So 
so yeah, as so as this is going on, uh, you will say, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The Dawn Crusher is uh, <clears throat> had had a a store of some things actually, possibly more wine, but in particular, there is an artifact that it possesses. It was said to be transporting. <clears throat> Now, I am informed that it has ended up there, but uh, no one has yet. But we have just found that where it is, but no one else knows this but us in this room. Which means we have time. Before anyone else gets it. To retrieve the items in there. It was a container for... Creatures of a more magical bent is what I'm looking for in particular. Anything else that's in there you can have. I may buy some of I may choose to buy some of the wine off of you if uh, if you have anything good in there, but uh, if you find if you find any uh, any good wine in there, but uh, the uh, that artifact in particular is one that I should be very interested in. Shaped rather like a, shaped rather like a pyramid. So it's not exactly a cage. Mm, not exactly. Not in the, the literal sense. It's an arcane item. It's always good to know what you're looking for. Hmm. About, Does this uh, ring any bells? Ah, I would like you to make an occult roll, please. A nine. Yay. That's, actually, that's an eleven because you get what's on, whichever one is higher. Oh yeah, um, yep. And, yep. Uh, <clears throat> which is still basically the same level of you didn't quite hit twelve, but anyway, um, that's four, eight, twelve. Um, but still, it's a raise. Um, yeah, um, you have heard of yeah. So creatures that something like that could contain creatures that are made entirely of one type of energy or another, perhaps, or just something. Mm -hmm. they, they would have to be probably magical constructs, maybe like golems or something that is an embodiment. Um, you did hear also uh, that. Some time ago, uh, and this was within the last, this was in the last couple of years, um, that, uh, that, that there was a, an artifact that originally um, belonged to the Kraken before their empire was just uh, basically was destroyed during the uh, uh, during the the uh, during the rains thirteen years ago during the the rise of the sea hags, um, that was used to um, basically it was largely it was used to uh, kind of uh, focus and direct uh, beings from outside, um, oh. but also worked on other more mundane um, magical like creatures. an elemental, for example? Yeah, yeah, things like that. Mm -hmm. if, if, if manipulated one way, it could be used as a prison. If manipulated another way, it could just simply be a habitation. It just depends on how you, uh, mm. how you use it. Qualos will nod... If such a thing is indeed contained in that ship, it will be very valuable indeed. Not precisely. So, as you, as you have a salvage vessel. So our mm -hmm. salvage fee will be an appropriate one. Of course. 
And like I said, you can have anything else that is on there. But, uh, and uh, if it doesn't balance out, I will pay the overage. Hmm. I think that sounds reasonable enough. As I said, the only item that, uh, that I desire is, uh, is that, is that one device? I think she's just gonna, like, to, like, like, glance at their eyes at the other members of the crew, except for Orvid, who she's still <laughs> mad at. <laughs> I had to still put it out there that I'm still very angry at Orvid, but, it, like, she's gonna see, like, if everyone else, like, agrees with what's happening here, just, like, give, like, like, do you guys agree, like, give a glance, like, and she just goes... I think we can make a deal with that. You have a salvage clue for this quest. Such an item on a visitor vessel is strange, but that's where it's found. It's where it's found. Hmm. Yeah. Well, they were, uh, let us just say, they were in the business of uh, grabbing things up wherever they chose. Huh. And Not I think. Exactly unusual. No, not quite. Very well. Then, uh... I leave it up to you as to how soon you are to go, but I would recommend you leave by morning. Sounds very reasonable enough. I'll make sure that the rest of the crew and the captain knows. Very good. Please, uh, see to these. They are drooling on my carpet. <laughs> Pointing to Or Ormond and, uh... Yeah, like, yeah, she's just gonna immediately, like, go over to the two of them and just, just, just grab them by the ears as they're just free to start leaving. Excellent. <laughs> I'm just well, gonna... <laughs> and it is staggering forth from the, uh, from the, the villa of uh, Don Mendoza, where we are going to take our break. Uh, we shall be back momentarily. See you soon. Thank you. 
have returned. Uh, we are at sea now. Um, and uh, it appears as though uh, they've decided to bring Hugh with them uh, on, this, on this journey. Uh, <coughs> they, they got everything together. They uh, explained to the captain that there's work now. Uh, and uh, you are now on your way. It's been a little time. It's been perhaps a number of days. We don't know how long it's been, but we're now uh, picking back up uh, in an area that we are sort of referring to as the brig, uh, beneath the beneath ships, uh, beneath the uh, beneath below decks of the the Dauntless, um, and we see uh, we see uh, Priscilla, the, the the first mate. We see Ormond, and we see Ormond's cousin Hugh, his head sticking up out of this large barrel-like thing. <laughs> Ormond, what? What in fresh water swab's name were you doing stealing wine from the dawn? I, I got this a job. What do you expect? I mean, you guys could have gone around, you could have tried finding something, you could have tried negotiating. I got this a job. He was already offering us a job. No, he had a job to offer. I got us the job. That doesn't excuse that you tried to steal the Don's wine. That, that was a mistake. Hugh does not have great hearing. I said, go find us some scullery maids. He thought I said celery maids. She's just gonna have this face palm at him, just going like... Ormond, this is the third time that has happened to the last six months. We can't have you do this every single time we come to this island. I, you know, hey, I'm, I'm trying to teach him sign language, but he's not very smart, so it's not going very fast. It's truly, it's not going very fast. <laughs> Besides, he's, you know, he's not exactly French. He's from the other side of the family. And what other side is that? So he was adopted into the Orleans. <laughs> he was originally part of the uh, other side of the family, the, the Delorines, not... Can I take a notice, check out this to see if he's lying? <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Notice. I feel as though at this point everything is uh, everything is embellishment, really, more than anything else. It's hard to say. I don't know what to believe anymore. Priscilla, Priscilla, Priscilla just no idea what to believe. None anymore. of us knows what to believe anymore. Uh, Are but, we all uh, there, or is it just the two of them? I think and, it's well, just the, three the two of them, of them right now. Right. Because uh, but, I'm... however, I need to. Uh, I, I feel as though there is a need now. Uh, for the group to, uh, as this voyage is going on, to make uh, boating checks for us. I can uh, definitely do that. So that we can see how well this voyage goes. Oh. <laughs> now everyone's gotten at least... Okay. Am I the only one that's capable of boating on this crew? I know, I mean, it's, uh, so, so, Queequeg and Priscilla and, uh, Forlan all passed. They, they got fours. Um, at least. I am a sailor, and I cannot sail. It's difficult. <laughs> I mean, um, that's, that's how crit fail, so you could spend a Benny if you, if you so desire. If you absolutely want to, although I will say that it's, um, it's not, uh, it's not critical. It's just, just we're just sort of determining how how quickly the the voyage goes and how well it goes and if you're able to avoid the the octopons and all that. Um, that's the important thing. I rolled a seven. 
I'm probably like kind of distracted by all the stuff going on and looking at the water going like, man, I wish I were back under the sea. But that's not how she talks, but you know, the thought is there. The thought is definitely there. I'm going to roll for the rest of the crew just to see how they do. Okay, they got a five overall, so they're good. Um, they, uh, the rest of the crew does their job. It's, it's perfectly fine. Um, and so you're not too terribly hampered as you are heading into these waters. Um, since you are a salvage operation primarily, you will know that the Whip Islands, the Whip Islands, um, sometimes the octopons like to set traps for people. Uh, so th- that's, that's not good. Um, <coughs> you at one point do spot a pod of them uh, off in the distance and you manage to be going in another direction, which is nice. Um, there are these, uh, basically humanoid octopus-like creatures, um, who, it's, it is said, work for the sea hags, because, uh, the Whip Islands are, uh, at the edge of, uh, that middle area, that middle area where, um, of the the flotsam sea where so much is there perhaps to salvage but then also you know uh rather a lot of danger so on um on our map we're going southeast on yeah you're going slightly southeast you're going um you're basically going east to the area where those northernmost uh, whip islands are mm-hmm yeah so um, yeah, kind of basically to sort of that area. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, so you will you will ultimately find yourselves <coughs> pulling in pulling in toward this island. Uh, it has a couple of uh, yes, it has greenery upon it, which not all of the Whip Islands do. A a you have a little hill of a sort of hill. Mountainous hills. Um, you sail around it once to sort of, sort of, or get the uh, get a measure of the thing, and uh, eventually see there is a cove. Uh, you don't you don't see a ship from here, but you see there's a cove that has something in it. Uh, this ship is. Is just just small enough to make it into the cove without any problems, and you will see there is what looks like peeking up out of the water is what seems to be the the bottom of looks like a galleon. So it's belly up. It is belly up. I immediately went Harry Potter. I'm sorry. Now I know what we're talking about. Um, big ship. Uh, the big one. Very big what ship. What is the is the area known for bad weather, bad winds? Uh, it's or... not great. Um, you're, you're kind of on the edge of that. If you go, if you go further east, then you would get into, um, places where you would have whirlpools and, uh, you would have bad, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, difficult winds and, uh, storms, that kind of thing. Um, it can Dangerous get out waters. here. Mm. Um, they might have been coming from that way because the, the, the cove is on that side of the island. But seem, doesn't it seem strange that it would capsize? If it's a cove, it, it, it's, I assume, it, quiet water. Yeah, definitely not the size of a cove that you would want to pilot this thing into. Mm-hmm. Um, right. So, I mean, that could easily be part of the reason why it capsized. Um, 
Hmm. Yeah, they 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 should not have brought it in there. <laughs> Is our ship smaller than this one? Oh yeah. Yeah, you can get in and out of the cove no problem. Does our lookout up above in the crow's nest see anything on the island? Hey. So your um your lookout, uh, who is an Atani, uh, which is sort of winged creatures, uh, uh, leans out, looks down, um, and uh, your, your lookout, uh, your lookout Edith, uh, basically, um, she will, um, she 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 will glance. She's glancing around. Yeah. I think you're muted. You see anything on the island or the waters around us? Um. Any movement? Any people? No, I'm uh, keeping a lookout, but I'm not seeing anything. No. Keep it up. Looks like no, I, was, I was mostly keeping an eye out for octopons. Not seeing any of those. Good, good. I'll ring the bell. Uh, I'll ring the bell if they come. Edith. Hmm. Keep an eye out on the waters too. Just below where the ship is. Don't want anything to be. Oh, yeah. Headed our way. It's probably a good idea, yeah. Right, no, that's, no, I'll definitely keep an eye on that. Hopefully. I find you a lot. So, so I, I go underwater. I can I'm swim underwater. Yes, <laughs> some of you are aquatic. <laughs> <clears throat> Who all is going Let's underwater? Let's do a reconnoiter. I... We will do a quick reconnoiter and report back. All right. I I don't think uh, Massaquani is very good going underwater. I don't think. Um, just as uh, as much as humans are, basically. Okay. I am semi-aquatic. Yeah, so I think, like, for this one, I think the first mate is just gonna stay on the ship and just help also keep an eye, okay. keep an eye on, like, on some intruders coming along, or maybe some traps. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, probably same here. Alright, so, the land, the, uh, the, the Nazi people are, uh, are hanging out on the, on deck. Um, whilst the sea people are going under. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when you said Nazi, I, I heard that completely different. Uh, I'm so no, not, sorry. I'm not <laughs> so sorry. C. I'm not, so not sorry. Not Tyson. C. People. Let's move on. Uh, <laughs> so, the, uh, <laughs> oh, the aquatic folk. That's the aquatic go. folk. I'm gonna go and uh, check out the uh, the underside of this boat. So, um, so we're in spite of myself, Jillian, I'm giving you are... another Benny. There we go. Okay. So keep in mind, Bennies can be used for rerolls and also to soak damage, and a number of other things. But anyway, let's keep going. You dive in. Um, you're swimming down. You can see this. Uh, yeah. Um, you can see the the this is the this is the dawn crusher. It has that written across it. Um, it uh, looks like it's yeah. You know, part of it is smashed in on some rocks near the edge, uh, or that come in you know, further than one would think they would. Um, so yeah, it definitely had some maneuvering issues in here. Um, but you can see that uh, you're not seeing any. Uh, Actually, I'm going to ask, uh, as you're out here, to make a notice roll for me, to make notice rolls. Mm -hmm. Mm 
Okay. It's a seven from Koalus. So you're going to see um, down here that um, there is not much in the way of... that. There, there, is, there is sea life. Here you have... Uh, you have, uh, you know, a manner of fish and uh, <coughs> a couple of sharks um, who are busy being sharks right now. Um, but uh, Chasing mermaids through sh shipwrecks, yes. Yeah, the usual. Um, but uh, they're not really messing with the, uh, they're not really messing with this ship right now. They're actually kind of staying away from it. Um, is there a way to tell how long it's been here? Uh, Probably, you know, growing barnacles where usually, yeah. because it's upside down, yeah. so there might be barnacles on yeah. deck or on the mast yeah. or something. So you go down and you count the barnacles. Um, <laughs> <coughs> one, one, two, three, it takes a while. Uh, no, you go down, you look and you see how many barnacles there are, and you think that it's Best guess, it, it probably has been here for the better part of, like, a year or two. Mm-hmm. Is this a busy area? Uh, so... As in, think, on the shipping lane, or similar... Uh, the Whip Islands lane? are mostly... Are mostly people come to salvage stuff, because uh, things from the, uh, from the Flotsam Sea wash up on its yeah. shores. Uh, quite a lot. Uh, so that's so you folks have been out to islands very much like this one before. So to me, if it's been here for the better part of a year, and it's you know, clo not in basically in the cove, so in, in an accessible area. Um, so I'm curious as to if there's anything left because that's just now a prime object for salvage i think part of it is like no one could find this ship before so this hmm. is the first intel about like even that its that was my question is this a place where people would regularly come by they wouldn't know to come to this island specifically uh this one's actually kind of out of the way it's like of the northernmost right. of them most folks when they raid islands, they raid, they raid the ones further to the south. That, that um, was my question. Yeah. It's it, it's one of those things people might come by here every now and then, maybe, mm. but it's not... Uh, yeah, it, it's... You wouldn't pick this island. Yeah. That, 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 that was my question, basically, to see. So unless you knew that sh this ship was here, you wouldn't know about it. Or you wouldn't accidentally come across it. Yeah, probably not. The chances right. of that wouldn't be aren't great. That 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 especially makes since sense you then. most what? of it you can't see. You can only see like the bottom of yeah. it when you're there when you know what you're looking for. Mm. And then okay. well, we'll have a look round. Maybe we you know you know swim through a couple of portals um, into uh, definitely trying to get into the cargo hold. Okay. Because this isn't like our first time salvaging exactly. from ships like this. So we would probably have something established that's like, okay, so you go through this way and then this way and we have regular check-ins and then we pop up and we tell the ship. So like, we're not doing this in a way that's going to get us ambushed. So yeah, you basically, you, you, uh, you kind of go from fore to aft. Um, and, uh, See the different sections below deck, as you know, as you're kind of looking below decks. This this one is way more, you know, more inverted than you're you typically used to, but you know, it's been, it's not out of the question. Um, and uh, you do note what you're able to discover is you kind of come, you sort of checking out the fore section, you know, in through the fo in through the forecastle, um, and uh, and up. Uh, you hit you you hit an air pocket. Um, Mm, okay. It looks as though, from what you can see, and it looks like it stretches. Uh, as you kind of come up, you can see the arch of the uh, the base of the base of the scallion way kind of up up above your head, and it goes kind of all the way to the other end. So it's there's uh, 
as far as you can see anyway, you hit a wall at some point, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it does look as though um, there so is... So just the very bottom of the ship. Yeah, the, the, so the, the below decks, Peel. a lot of below decks is has got air. It's not... Uh, uh, yeah, that makes sense, because it, it's not if it turns over and sinks, then, yeah. There was that scene in Pirates of the Caribbean that does that, too. <clears throat> yep. Yeah. Um, and I guess we're looking for a a section that is secured in some way. Yeah, so you're going to be hunting about um, down here. Um, I do have a question for you. Um, you, you see that there are, that there is kind of, um, as, as you're sort of looking and uh, you, you think that they could probably, um, so there are two things, you, well, all right, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, it doesn't take you too long. You think you do find an area where the cargo hold is. Um, there is this... It looks like it is been secured a couple of different ways. Because um, they actually have it kind of barricaded. And then there's a chain with a big padlock. Ooh. And then it looks like someone has burned arcane symbols into the door. <laughs> ah. <clears throat> so does this look like a a ward of some description? Yeah, kind of. Is this something can I tell that we've what seen it before? will do if I set it off? You can see part of it from here. Um, you'd kind of need to get close up to to, to read the whole thing. Um, and in order try. to do that, you kind of need to get some stuff out of the way. You're gonna do, you're gonna be moving stuff for a little while. Mm. Um, I assume Cord can also talk underwater, being aquatic. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we it's can, not so we can, efficient. Can always. communicate. Yeah. I, well, actually, this this part of it is also above water, so you can. Oh right. Okay. You can use air if um, you like. <laughs> I like that. Right. I like air. Do. I'm a do fan. not. Do not touch the writing. Wasn't planning on it, but good note. Mm. This can be dangerous. It could be a word of some description. I need to see all of it to know exactly what it is. What do you need? Um, this stuff moved away. All <laughs> right. Now, <clears throat> brief note, brief note, um, if you wish, it would occur to you that you can, uh, your crew could probably cut through the hull oh, yeah. if you want them to come down and help you. Oh, this yeah, is going to take a very freaking long time for you to, so for you to move up. all this Everybody! by yourself. Come on down, the water's great! <laughs> Be careful, there's some weird white writing! So you can, yeah, they could either, you could have them swim in or they could cut through the hull either way. Yeah, mm -hmm. let's do that. Uh, yeah, one of us will zoom out. And... Is it difficult, like, long holding your breath to get to the air pocket, or is it something that we do need to cut into it? Because I feel like if we don't have to cut into the hull... Um, I probably will call for vigor rolls um, for the... Uh, it's not going to take too long. They could probably manage it. It's within human ability uh, to do. Um, and I could help. We could help them, too. Like Yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, I we think... can point out where on the hull yeah. we are, yeah. and say, yeah, cut through there. Yeah, if if you decide you want to cut through, but yeah, it just depends on how you want to, how you, how you want to try, how you want to try doing it. Because we only want to salvage what's in the ship, not not the ship itself. So if you have to cut it apart, then so be it. Then we have parts for our own ship. Hmm. Swim up and be, tell everybody what's going on. Let them know. Make that decision for themselves. I think it's probably fine for most of you. If you want to swim, I can help you guide. Uh, but if you'd like, we can cut into the ship. There's air. 
But there's some weird writing, and we do not have the time to do it ourselves. I'm in favor of taking the quick round going through the hole, but uh, make some okay ish. And the rest of you are also okay. here to, to hear this. Yeah. Yeah, Quee Quake is actually going to take off his monocle and <gasps> yeah. You folks are the salvage team, so the captain's pretty much leaving this part of you know how you want to do it up to you. Yeah, I'll just make sure that I uh, make sure that that the crew is all prepared to do all the self ready to salvage everything that they can. Make sure that they go with course warning to not touch the writing. If they do, they're sharing the brig with our uh, with mm-hmm. Hubert. And it is not that big of a barrel. <laughs> no. I make sure. To... <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna um, like basically help with 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 guiding everything so it goes smoothly. Yeah. Um, we have a hole yeah. in the hull so that we can haul. Yes, precisely. <laughs> It will be a little faster getting stuff out, probably. Yeah, yeah you can always do that. Yeah. I'm sure we have a saw somewhere on board. You do have a saw. You have some. You have some. Equipment. Your, your ship has a. Um, oh, I forget. Your ship has a carpenter. Um. So um. They can come out and. Uh, they can come out and you know with the. And and also sort of taking apart ships is. Yeah, you know, standard procedure for salvaging. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So we you got the equipment have the necessary for this. Tools. <laughs> you're, you're, you're set. You're set. Um, and the hull's probably mostly free of barnacles at this point, so. Yeah. Yeah, that's the, the lucky thing because, you know, it's this is like, oh, the ship's bottom is bare. Uh, so, yeah. They saw through. Um, they knock a hole in it and they sort of that the. The wood goes and falls down. You hear it splash. <clears throat> and uh, you all head into the in through the hole. Once again, into the hull of the ship. It is not a very, it's not a very far swim slash walk from here. Uh, again, the foredeck, uh, under the foredeck, to. Um, the uh, the hold, and you see like a bunch of debris, a bunch of uh, <coughs> benches, uh, it's like a bunch of stuff just got piled up here in front of this door. Oh, I'm sure you're trying to keep someone out. That or gravity. Something in. Why would you stack right. things up? So the, the item that Don was describing mm-hmm. can be used to keep something in. Yes. So the question is, were they transporting just the item or were they transporting the item with something in it? That's something that I'm sort of worried about. You think that's why they capsized? It, <clears throat> ooh, hmm. Hmm. I don't think so. It might have freed itself otherwise. Right. So it's. Uh, I assume, Jim, that mm-hmm. um, the cage doesn't just contain <coughs> whatever it is, but also subdue its powers. The ones that you're aware of, of which there are not many, there were not many mm. to begin with, even before the Empire fell. Um, were you know the ones that worked? Yes, did subdue the powers of the thing by by keeping it in a different state. Mm. It's like it like didn't exist in exactly, exactly the same way. Yeah, it didn't exist in exactly the same way. If the cage is intact, 
we should be safe. If right. the cage is intact. If it's not, then why are we here? Hmm. Um. Right. So when the stuff is moved, the 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 the, the rubbish is all the stuff blocking uh, all the writing is moved away. Can I tell what it is? That inscription, enchantment, ward, or whatever. So yeah, you folks. Pulling stuff away. Um, and uh, you can see now more of the uh, more of this writing up and down the door. Um, and I need you to make an occult roll for me, please. Mm -hmm. And a five. Okay. Um. Hmm. Let's see. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um. The wards are not, as you suspected meant to keep people out. Right. They are... So it's not like a um, um, a burglary alarm or anything like that. Not exactly. They are... Yeah, they are functioning, you think. Mm-hmm. They they are working. Can you tell us who, about this? Yeah, yeah. Who, They're written across say, the door and who, the wall, and opening the door would this, break them. Whoever put this here, if again this cage is inside, didn't trust the cage because this world is designed to keep things in, not us out. Um, you mentioned a door. Is there a keyhole? There is a keyhole. Qualus will look through the keyhole. Yeah. Now keep in mind there are still chains and pad and a padlock oh, yeah, to yeah. get through. But yeah, um, I need to look through the keyhole. Roll notice for me, please. Mm-hmm. Seventeen. Okay. You see all. <laughs> Come to understand everything. Actually, I the push my is... eye through the keyhole. <laughs> so actually, I, I this is, I'm gonna I'm gonna carry the results of this notice roll along a little bit uh, to mm -hmm. the interior of the room itself because the thing is, you notice immediately that this keyhole has been blocked. Right. And. You notice fully is that there's some kind of pressure on the other side. So the pressure is from the inside to the outside. Yeah, there's like a. Uh, it's been blocked by it's. It's been using like some kind of thing made of maybe hard clay. The keyhole is blocked from the inside by something. So I want to poke through <laughs> something with long and thin. I have my lockpicks. You might need something longer if it's on the other side. A but dagger? you can try. Yeah, you can try. Um, yeah, I can I can try and push through with some lockpicks, and then maybe if that's not long enough, a dagger. So you're you're, you're going to hit it with a lockpick. You're going to hit this like tap, tap. You're going to try to push it. You notice after that's a moment a that bit. it's 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 it, your lockpick is going to give a little too much if you use it. So you might want to try switching to the dagger. Yeah. 
I need you to make a strength roll for me, please. And Koalas will stand behind cords, ready to pull them back as soon as as soon as there's something going on. Ah, you got a raise. Okay. Ooh. I'm beefy. You push with the dagger, and there is like a sort of a sound on the other side, and water begins leaking out of the keyhole. Huh. That doesn't look good. I may have punctured something. So, what's behind it is an aquatic thing. One would assume. But, yep, yeah, um, that would help, I guess. To sink the ship? What do you think? No, no, no. What do you think, folks? If... Right. If what is kept in here is an aquatic creature that will not survive being exposed to air or not for long, if we just let out the water that's in this room, we should be safe. What if the creature is water? You said elementals, right? Hmm. Oh, well, the, the creature won't be as big as the room. Is there a way I can see um, actually, what was Queequeg saying? Oh, saying I was just saying that, uh, well, if the creature is an elemental and made of water, it's actually in the room with us right now. And he's going to point at the water that's just pouring in through the keyhole. Mm -hmm. there. A point he's going to give well that a, a little bit of a, a prod just to see yeah. if he can stop the water. You're trying to, uh, you're going to try to plug the keyhole, or are you going to... Yeah, he's uh, just going to put his finger into the keyhole a little bit, just to see if he can stop the water. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, it doesn't, you know, you don't need to put it there in the water. It's kind of building up, but it sort of stops. Oh, it doesn't really feel like a lot of pressure here. You've solved his leaking puzzle. There's, there's a little pressure, but it's not... Yeah, it's, you, I mean, you're you're more than strong enough to just. <laughs> it's possible that it's just one day more that was, that wound up in the, uh, container or whatever it is, uh, just from it sinking, and possibly. Um, where in relation to the rest of the ship is this? So you're room in the hold. Can... This uh, this is a small portion of the hold that is that is walled off with this door. Um, so, uh, and deck wise underneath is that? So if we were you now like you, the you way were on the lowest the, deck, the way we came in, would it be possible to? not go through the door, but through what is essentially the floor. Um, if you were to, if you were to leave, is yeah. that what you're saying? You, yeah, you'd basically, you'd, um, you, you'd have to head, uh, probably swim a little bit, but head, uh, you wouldn't have to go under the water per se, but you'd head, head out through the, uh, mm. through, through the exit to the, uh, to, uh, the fore area. So rather than going through the warded door or warded wall, go through the other side by force. The other side, I'm because sorry. Because it's what? all made of wood. Yeah, it's all made of wood, yeah. yeah Just throwing ideas out of there, out there. Would that be an idea? What do you think? possible 
just uh, so it hammer, would hammer not be through. it would not be the anticipated point of attack. Right. Um, I think while this is happening, Court and Ormond might start digging. Right. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. We're um, gonna start looking for loot. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Um, I think we're gonna go off of. Uh, yeah, I think we're just gonna go off of notice here, as you're you're looking around for stuff. You're searching. Ah, excellent. <laughs> I'll tell you what you find in a moment. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> I, I think I think I think I want to go ahead and use a use a Benny here. Now here's the problem: the thing with Savage Worlds, when you roll Snake Eyes, you don't actually get to use a Benny on that. Oh crap! <laughs> Unfortunately, which you did in this case. I can. <laughs> I didn't fail that bad. You can. You totally can. If you want, you can use one of your uh, one of your Bennies. And you can... I, yes. Well, that or I could go ahead and give one of my Bennies because that is an ability that I have. I will take Ooh. one. That is true. So you can use one of his bennies for your reroll. I would like to do that, please. So I can reroll awesome. now? Yeah, right yeah, ahead. Notice. Is it better? That's that's slightly not better. You do still get the best of the rolls that you make. Um, Jesus. You got, you got a two this time. You got a three before. <laughs> so. Bye. You are hunting around and you're you're having trouble finding. You're like you know what the heck because yeah, you you see some things you think might be valuable and then it's like no wait no, um, it's like you know these are imitation you know kind of you know, imitation candlesticks and stuff like that you're going through. Ormond, you think you found something um, that uh, <laughs> is it? Is it's it, in the opposite room. Is it is it a bottle of uh, Chateau de Releasing Sun? Well, you you find you find there there is uh, there. The, there is what looks like a wine rack, but um, in particular, um, you're sort of uh, you, you, you're sort of going. There's this little jeweled box um, that is sitting open, and <clears throat> there is this there's this what looks like a key inside. The kind of a what looks like it could be a little sort of gemstone set into it. It's a little sort of clear gemstone. Hmm. Well, I mean, um, I'm sure that probably would have some value to somebody. So, sure, I'll go ahead and I'll take the key. Okay, you reach into the box and you pick up the key. And uh, when you do, the little gemstone suddenly pulses with light. Meanwhile, back in the hold, quite suddenly, the... Oh, uh, no. Oh, no. The the markings on on the door have begun to pulse with light. They're starting to glow. Ormond, what did you do? Well, Ormond's in another room. You're not sure. We have no idea. uh, I didn't even dive in. I'm on the show. I'm just <clears throat> saying that a character Orman would have <laughs> But something interesting is happening because it's like it's pulsing, and then you see water is starting to leak out from the sides of the door. Okay. Um, and it get out of the, the way of, of a sudden burst. The padlock is unlocking itself. Yeah. Everyone Definitely has a moment in, to do in something. Cover of some so sort Qualys of is getting out of the way and trying to take cover. Uh, I'm uh, towards what? that door, closer to where cover. he was. All right. So yeah, yeah. Court, court is uh, is kind of just a little outside the room, so you can you can you can easily take cover. Um, what's uh, what's Forlin doing? Probably just fighting like a, something that's very vertically tall. Uh, knocking over and kind of gesturing to uh, Priscilla and Quick Quick, just like, uh, get down, get down. You're grabbing a bench. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess I'm getting down. <laughs> what's what's Quick Quick doing? Uh, Quique You're still Quique, right there, uh, actually. So it's up to you if you want. <laughs> he, he's gonna back up, but he's also gonna draw his uh, harpoon out. All right. All right. 
so water is spitting out of this keyhole now, and the door bursts open. Water splashes out, uh, carrying you, carrying you all back a bit with this this brief little wave of it, and you can now see into the hold, into that part of the hold, where bobbing up and down in the in, in the middle and sort of in the water as the water is lowering. You see what looks like this this pyramid shape made of something is it like stone or rock some kind of uh, some kind of metal and rock and as it sort of bobs forward just behind it in the shadows you see this this form it seems to be somewhat sinewy. Moving back and forth, you see things that look perhaps... It's hard to say what they look like, but they're sort of tentacly things. And... You hear... Who is this? Uh, my name is Ormond. <laughs> yes! Yes! <laughs> yeah, but you hashtag out. Hashtag blame Ormond. Ormond. Ormond, I have you to thank for this release. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, well, uh, you're welcome, I suppose. Excellent. Your life force shall be spared. <laughs> and so the water is surging forward. And... You see that, um... These little spouts of... These little water spouts are starting to come up on either side of the door. As this thing... Gets closer. Comes to the doorway. Comes around the pyramid thingy and, uh... Into the doorway. And it is looks like this... Looks like a tall person almost, roughly shaped like a person with long hair and sort of tentacle-like, arm-like tentacles basically. It's blue and green, sort of blue-green in color, you think, from what you can tell from the uh, from the light that you've brought down here. I'm assuming you've brought like a mm -hmm. lantern type deal from the ship. And uh, <coughs> it comes forth and uh, just sort of addresses Queequeg and says, ah, which one of these shall you feed me in tribute? <laughs> oh, um, actually, oh, I... Th <laughs> uh, actually, um... Not anyone in here, uh, but we do have someone who's uh, been pickling in a barrel on our ship. Um... <laughs> Served for flavor. Um, I think he would make a very fine meal. And plus, no one would probably miss him. <laughs> Noted. In the meantime... It says, starting to move forward. I shall, I shall have one of these. Oh, you don't want any of these guys. These guys don't have any sort of soul that uh, I have freed you, my friend. Mm. <laughs> <clears throat> 
<laughs> just sort of will come forward and say, <clears throat> Friend. <laughs> There are only the beings who, beings made up of my glorious water, for I am the deluge. And it's, uh, it's going to surge toward you. I will... Towards me? Or towards no, it's going to surge so, so, toward, towards Qualys. I Not if I can help it! So we're going to deal out some cards real quick. Yay! We don't have a huge amount of time here, but we're gonna we're gonna do a round or two. Initiative. Yeah, I, I can go about half an hour over past seven. Okay, <clears> okay, <throat> that's that's good to know. I think we also had some uh, someone else that, that had a hard stop though, so um, we, we will. Um, I wish to respect that uh, as we are. Continuing. Oh, look at that. Mira has got a joker. Um. So, because one of the party got a joker, this thing is going on a 10. Um, that actually means that uh, everyone is going to get another Benny. So many Bennies. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, what's a Benny, Benny, Benny again? I'm sorry. So a Benny, it's, these are these little tokens that I'm, I'm uh, oh. giving you here. Uh, if you, you can spend one for a reroll, or you can spend one when you get hit to, uh, to attempt to soak oh. the damage. Um, did you, um, <clears throat> and, uh, did you so, also use one to draw another card? There is a, uh, there are, uh, there are several things you actually can use a Benny for. Um, I think that is one of the things. Um, I need to. Uh, I need to go back. That's, that, that was that was new in Adventure Edition, so I need to. Uh, I need to to review that real quick. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that's that sounds very familiar. Um, <laughs> um, I didn't have time, unfortunately, to pull in my quick reference chart here. Um, 89.95. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, you can use a Benny to draw a new action card also. Um, so that's, uh, that, is, that is a thing you can do. Do you wish to? Hmm. That card's pretty decently high. I know that. You uh, might want to hold on to that. Yeah, all right. Um, and he knows <clears> it too if, if, uh, if he wants to redraw. Um, to spend a Benny to redraw, but that's up to him. Um, in the meantime, Mira, you uh, get to go first, if you wish. Uh, because you have a Joker, two things. One is all of your rolls are at plus two this round. Uh, secondly, um, you can go whenever you want. So if you want, you can go now, or you can interrupt someone else's action without having to roll against them. Um, so it's totally up to you. Do you want to do something now, or do you want to hold? I'm going to hold on for now. Okay. I would like to spend a penny to eat all. All right. Um, we'll go ahead and take that. And your new card is a queen, which is good because otherwise the monster was about to go next. Um, <laughs> it is now your turn, coincidentally. Burst of water. Ah, excellent. Um... If it wants to eat me, I'm not going to let it. Okay. Um, go ahead then, and uh, and uh, do your uh, do your spell casting to uh, aim this burst at it, and we'll see how we, how we do. Um, um, nine. Okay. It's been a number of days, so you have your power points all back at this point. Just so oh, you're right, aware. Okay. So you got a success with a raise. Um, so it's uh, anything that uh, you get on a raise with that spell. Uh, 3d6. Okay, so you go ahead and uh, do 3d6. Okay. Uh, yeah, let me see if you actually have a thing. 13. Okay, awesome. Um, yes, uh, funny thing is you can also Benny damage in this system if you decide you want to, but you got a pretty good roll here. So I, want, I don't have many Bennies, so I want to... Understandable. Um, okay, so you hit its toughness, um, so toughness is 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, yes, so it is currently, 
Uh, you hit it, it is it has one wound. Uh, you knock this thing back, and it's sort of like holding on to the to the doorway uh, as it's sort of emerging. It's it's sort of uh, half of it splashing away from the door. You kind of hit it almost like with this spear of water <laughs> that uh, that comes out um, as you are fighting water with yeah, so water. It looks like uh, yeah. Kolo's sort of yeah gestures, and then from his hands springs a cone of water towards the creature. Yeah. So you're like spraying, spraying bits of it away. It looks like that's actually hurting it, which is good. Um, you are the avatar. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it's uh, it's having a heck of a time. Um, yeah, all, all magic users in <coughs> this in Fifty Fathoms are elemental mages. Yep, yep. Um, so it is now its turn. Uh, so so this the deluge, as it's calling itself, is now going to attempt to unshake. Um, and that is a spirit roll. Its spirit is d6. And it got, it succeeded. Uh, it got a five at minus one, uh, since it does have a wound. Uh, so it, uh, it does manage to unshake as it's like, so it's pulling off. It's like, ah! And it will surge forward and attempt to do the same thing at you. It, uh, Leans forward and a spout of water comes forth from it, um, and that is just sort Both kind of pelting fight. you, <laughs> pelting you with this thing. Um, now you, this is, this is actually a water versus water battle, like yes, yeah, totally water versus water, 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 water versus water. Lots of heavy CGI going on right now, um, <laughs> so. Uh, Qualys, I need uh, so Qualys and anyone else who is uh, let's see, were, were you behind the bench? With it, with every, I, I, with uh, the other uh, folks? Yeah, I, I said earlier I moved out of the way of the door, yeah. so yeah. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to uh, do a quick uh, check. One to three will be uh, Priscilla. Uh, four to six will be Forlan. Okay, so that's Priscilla. Um, is kind of next to him, and uh, so this cone is is hitting the both of you, and I need both oh, of you no! to. Make, I need the two of you uh, to make a strength roll at minus two to avoid being shaken by it. Okay. Ooh, not good. That's not good. I, can I use my Benny? <laughs> you may. Uh, yeah, I would like to. All right, you use a Benny. Um, that's still that's still uh, that's a two. Uh, so yeah. that still doesn't uh, that still yeah, doesn't pass, unfortunately. That's, that's fine. I guess I'm shaking then. All right. Um, and uh, Ozzy, go ahead and make a strength roll, please. Strength. Why does it have to be strength? <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know either. A three. Can you use a Benny to soak the damage if you want to? If you take damage, yes. yes. Um, you can, if you're just shaken, you can use a spent. You can spend a Benny to automatically unshake, but it's often more efficient to just wait till it comes to your turn and see if you unshake because you can still spend the Benny. Right. Um, so this also, this too failed. Um, so you also are shaken. Well, this is not strong. Yeah. All right. Um, so yeah, no, you know, you are. Uh, <laughs> the two of you are knocked back against the back wall, um, and you're both currently shaken. Um, and uh, that's uh, that's its turns as it's coming coming back up, and it it has uh, it has murder in its eyes. Um, is and it, whose turn is it next? It is now, and again, remember, a court can can act whenever she wants, but it is now uh, it is now Orman's turn. Orman, uh, you kind of hear <clears throat> a commotion behind you, and you sort of look around, and you see that in <clears throat> the next room, uh, apparently, some kind of water creature is attacking your friends. Oh, uh, okay. Um, I think Ormond is just going to kind of... He's going to take a moment, just because this is a bit, you know, of a thing. And then he's going to go ahead and draw his saber. Uh, and as he's doing so, he's going to go ahead and kind of like kind of drop the key and go, well, I guess we don't need this anymore. 
and and you know go charging into the other room to uh you charge into the other room you see this thing um do you want to try to hit it oh uh, yeah hey why not with, with your saber awesome yeah saber doesn't have any magic or anything on it does it by any chance um no okay just checking um yeah. go ahead and make a uh, make a fighting roll for me please sure Seven, awesome. Uh, so you hit this thing. Um, go ahead and uh, I mean, go ahead and uh, roll roll your damage on it. So that's going to be your um, probably I would assume uh, your strength a strength plus a d six if it's what I think it is. It's a saber. Um, it was a strength plus d four. Oh, right here. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead and roll that damage. Oh, okay, excellent. So, um, you do that. You you try to cut through it, and uh, it's like basically cutting through water. It uh, doesn't seem to actually do much of anything as you are trying to slice through this thing. Doesn't even notice you. So I get to go whenever I want. Absolutely. Want to go? Here's my question. I don't know what I'm able to do because I can shoot a bow and arrow mm -hmm. and I can stab it with a dagger, mm -hmm. but I don't feel like that's going to be successful or helpful in this moment. Like, what do I see? What could I do that would be useful? Could I like mm -hmm. try and wrestle uh, make, people out of it? Make a notice roll for me. Uh, or if you have a cult, you can make a cult. I don't think you have a cult though, so I would say make a notice roll for me. Uh, I don't see a cult. I'm assuming I don't have it. Yeah, that. if it's not on there, then you don't have it, no. So I'd say roll notice here. This is a very important roll. Uh, Three. Actually, you, you got a plus two to that roll. Oh. because you're so, um, Joker. Yeah, an interesting thing you did notice, um, that one of the lanterns that was hung up, uh, that you mm -hmm. folks had hung up when you came in, uh, hung from the ceiling, as it, uh, floor, ceiling, um... And uh, it, as it uh, as it came through, um, it dodged to avoid it as it was uh, moving toward it. So, cool. Yeah, it doesn't like whatever is in there. Is that my whole turn? No, no. You just noticed that. Can I Throw grab the it? At it? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. You can. There are a couple of lanterns in here. You can grab one. I'd like to take a lantern and throw it at the monster. Awesome. Okay. Uh, please make an athletics roll for the throwing. Athletics. Okay. Oh, that's very good. You hit with a raise. Um, so I'm going to ask that you roll. Uh, let's see. It was going to be. So, yeah. So this would be. What is your strength die? Um, I, th I think mine is a six. Yes. A d6? Okay. Excellent. Yeah. So um, roll 3d6 for me, please. Okay, now it's time for me to learn how to roll. <laughs> Excellent. In, um, you I can don't... drift over to, uh, if you drift over and you see the little panel on the left, there's a little die there near the bottom ah. of the 20. If you hover over it, you can see a little thing will pop up where you can roll a number of different types of dice. There Maybe. you go. There you go. Ten. Um, yeah, you hit this thing. Uh, ah. It doesn't notice that. It, it didn't notice that uh, you were coming, but it notices the, that it that because um, the the lantern kind of bursts open, um, and uh, it's like goes in. I mean, it's immediately put out, but um, the fact that you know it's, it's like your strength and the uh, and the d6 plus you know the the the, the, the rays you got uh, was enough uh, that it's. That you have uh, you have managed to shake it again. It is now once again shaken. Um, yeah. It's like <sighs> so you hit it. Um, hit it with fire. <laughs> oh wait, it's actually that's actually twelve. I forget you get that plus two um, <laughs> because again it's it's uh, you get a plus two to everything. Um, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, so actually that hits it with a wound. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's not doing great at this point. It's like <sighs> part of it is melting away. Um, at this point, it's like ah, as it's lashing out with its its tentacles. Why didn't we bring any fire mages? Go. There you go. 
All right. And uh, now we are down to uh, Pris Priscilla. What would you like to do? Hey, I want to go and shake first because I'm shaking. Awesome. Make a uh, make a spirit roll. I think there's an unshake roll on here. Can I use? Yeah, that's the same. It should just default to your to your spirit too. Yeah, so unshake. Um, so you succeed. Yeah. Uh, now act. What would Yay. you like to do? It's in my face. I don't like it. I want to shoot it with my pistol. Excellent. <laughs> Why not? So, Why not, yeah. indeed? Um, go ahead and uh, make a shooting roll. All right. All right, that's a four. That's going to hit. Yay! Um, go ahead and roll damage. Okay, so that is a total of seven damage. Wait, I think I had to roll damage, because it's just no, you... attack and damage. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Yeah, I click roll damage. <laughs> yes, I set that up so you could... I set that up so you could just press that one button and that would do both shooting and damage. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention that. So we have 14, okay. Because of the nature of this, you're essentially hitting it with a thing that is not exactly on fire, but is very hot. Mm -hmm. um, and since you got like 14, I'm gonna go ahead and give that to you. Um, <laughs> this bullet burns through this thing. Uh, at seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Yeah, 12, 13, 14. Yeah, so it's gonna, it does yet another point of damage to it. Hey. Uh, it's not doing really well. It's looking very bad at this point. It's uh, It's got three wound levels. It's still shaking. It's like... <sighs> it's now like lunging up and down. It's barely even human looking at this point anymore. Um, and that was your turn. Yeah, and I want to say, like, can I do like a free action? Just going, no one hurts the ship's mage and gets away with it. Absolutely. And now we are over to uh, we are over to Forlan. What would you like to do? I would also like to shoot at it, mainly because I do not want to get too close to it. Oh. Okay, that is gonna hit. So damage. Okay, huh. that the bullet just sort of passes through. It's probably we're a little too far away, or the angle it just didn't quite uh, yeah. didn't quite do anything. Uh, passes through it to the other side, hits the wall on the far side. It's like, <sighs> it sort of grunts a little bit. That's about it. Um, do you want to move, or is are you? Uh, I think I'm gonna just going to like are. behind your bench. Uh, yep, yeah, yeah, behind the bench. <laughs> Excellent. That kind of archetypical like shoot into kind of a reload. Queequeg, what would you like to do? Uh, Queequeg is going to uh, take his harpoon and uh, stick the pointy end into. Uh, one of the lanterns to light it on fire. Awesome, awesome! I approve. <laughs> and um, uh, and then he's going to heave it straight for the uh, head of uh, okay. the deluge. Now that's going to be a that's going to be two action. Okay, so so it's two actions: one to uh, one to um, uh, one to light it, the second to hurl it. Um, you're aiming. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to make you aim for the head. It doesn't really have a head anymore, but you can aim for it. Okay. Yeah, you're, you're aiming for the thing. Uh, so this is going to be, this throwing roll will be at a minus two, just because it's your second action this turn. You're like, right thing. And then, okay. But uh, you can hurl it one-handed. <laughs> and uh, go ahead and make an athletics roll, please. To, uh, to Oh, actually, no, you've got, you don't, you've got a, uh, it's, it's there on the, I, I put it there under throwing, under the spear, under the spear, under the harpoon. So it's harpoon thrown. That little button to the left of it, you should be able to do that, and it'll throw it. Okay. Um, let's see. That's a four. That is minus two. Do you want to spend a Benny to re-roll that so that it'll actually hit? Because that was a... yeah. Sure. Do All it. Right. Do All it. Right. Go ahead and re-roll that. So just hit the button again. Oh! Damn it. <laughs> you can keep going if you like. Wow. Yeah. Fine. All right, we'll do that again. Oh, that's better. There you go, four. That'll hit. Yay. Um, go ahead and click on uh, rolling damage there. For the, so let's see, seven uh, for that uh, for for that harpoon hit. The the hit from a flaming harpoon. Uh, ordinary ordinarily fire just does one d six, but this is too cool. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> it is already shaken, so that will do a fourth wound to it. Um, what does this look like when you when when you take this thing out? Because that's what's happening here. <laughs> um, oh, so you, you see Queequeg. He just rears back, um, 
in such a way that all of his muscles sort of flex into like that Hulk Hogan flex. <clears throat> um, and uh, he just follows through with it. Um, and I think what it's going to do is uh, it's going to pierce through the head of the deluge. Uh, and the harpoon is just going to carry it through to the other side and just stick into the wall. And mm-hmm. then it's just going to hit there, just go. Blah, 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 blah. Awesome. And this thing, it just come, penetrates all the way through the, the deluge and it just turns to steam as it passes through. So it's just like. <sighs> and it fades Oh, good. Away. We get a day at the spa. <laughs> Spa day complete. Spa day! Oof. Congratulations. <clears throat> the monstrous creature is no more. Yeah! Unexpected. I'm so. just gonna... Oh, go ahead, Jim. No, go ahead. I'm just gonna look around. It's gonna be just like... Ah, let's just get this fucking thing and get out of here. So, you all manage after a uh, if if we may since we're at seven, I'm going to go ahead and and uh, and wrap this up because we have just defeated the uh, the deluge. Uh, you manage to um, you, you manage to get this thing, uh, the, this this floating pyramid thing. Um, do you uh, are you going to are you going to give it to the don? Are you going to return it to the don? Because you do find a bunch of other stuff here on the ship. Yeah, uh, you you find you do find some bottles of wine that are pretty good. Uh, you find they did have some treasure. It, this was a pirate ship. Yeah, we'll uh, go through the captain's yeah. daughter and yeah. You find just an, you, you find a bunch of treasure here. You find some uh, some rudders with uh, some information about uh, about about what the ship was doing and the different ships that it hit and why it was trying to hide. Uh, because it had found this thing and they didn't know quite how to control it, and so they eventually their mage just sort of walled it up in the inside the uh, uh, inside the hold before the thing before they made the ship crash. Uh, they shouldn't have left a shiny button. They should not have what left does, a shiny button. What does um, Qualus um, think this thing would be worth to? Now, in the appropriate circles. In the appropriate circles, it would be worth quite a lot. Yes. Uh, we, we are talking uh, tens of thousands of pieces of eight. And that's going to be our price. Oh, you're going to... Uh, you're, you're going to attempt to... Uh... No, uh, let's, no, no, let's do this for you. You right. need This space. thing we're, is we're worth uh... hmm? t- <laughs> 30,000 pieces of eight. Do you think the Don is going to pay that? If not, I might be able to someone who does. Well, we're, we were told to give this to him. Nothing. No, no, he said he will also pay the excess. Well, he'll pay the excess for the... Well, let me explain. Uh, because the way this was, he said you were to give this to him, and he was going to pay your salvage fee. Uh, out of anything else you find here, and if there is excess beyond that, if you don't find enough here to pay your salvage fee, which you told him up front, you may remember, yeah. then uh, if, if you if you found enough, if you didn't find enough here to pay your salvage fee, he would pay that excess. But he I never said anything were... about paying a, a value you come up with for this de- for this uh, device. Yes, and this is up to me since I'm the ship's mate, so I have power. And I think well, it should be a, uh, you know, there's, you know, how the deluge, is that what it's called, the deluge? I'm going to call it the deluge anyway. We don't even really expect the powerful deluge to just freaking show up. So there's going to be a, an insurance compensation for that, for, for risking the crew's lives to defeat this okay. Yeah, there's yeah. gonna be a compensation for fighting this thing that risks the lives of our crew, crewmen. I suppose that's fair. So Queequeg is uh, standing there with the harpoon. And he's sort of scratching his back lazily with it. So <laughs> I really don't see what's stopping us from just looting the entire ship and then taking that pyramid thingy to sell it to uh, the highest bidder. Tell the dog they have the wrong ship. Idea. Yeah. And I mean, who here is going to tell that we were not able to recover the pyramid? 
We could have all we have, a, we have a reputation to keep. I'm not a doing. Pyramid. I never saw a pyramid. Do we? <laughs> I mean, I, I I feel like there is an appropriate time and place to be a pirate, and I think this is one of them. Mm. Just be careful. Yes. You don't want to be branded. Yeah, be careful. Oh, I, will I say, mean, who's going to uh, see that brand with all my tattoos? Oh. Fair. Eh. I'm... Yeah. Well, I will say, I'm... Sandy. Okay. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> this will definitely be something I'll have to discuss with the captain, but see what we can do about it. I will say, darling, that the more people who know about it, the harder the secret is to keep. So he's. What, so what do you mean by that? What are you saying? We're saying that um, I think five of us here believe that uh, we should go with my plan. And uh, <laughs> we might have to uh, silence you. You know what they say about loose lips. <laughs> they sink ships and release the deluge. Fine. Whatever happens here does not leave this galleon. Literally. Uh, glad you agree. Well, I I'm think glad it's... we didn't have to use the M word. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's uh, good that we, uh, we we came back to the old adage that what happens in the galleon stays in the galleon. <laughs> Coincidentally enough, uh, a brigantine ship is 30,000 pieces of eight, and uh, it actually just, uh, a frigate is 30,000. You could get your own ship if you really wanted to. Yay. Um, and there's some that are cheaper than that. So it just sort of depends how you wanted to play this, but that's, that's all in the future. For now, you are victorious. And, uh, Hello! Unfortunately, it seems the Don will not be receiving this item, uh, but you do find several good bottles of wine. Such <laughs> a pity for him. Able to be more than compensated for your salvage fees. And... Pity for him. Pity for <laughs> us. We will never be able to go downtown again. Yeah. I'm hardly ever to go downtown anyway. There are many anyway. more islands in this world. Yeah, it is called the Thousand Islands for a reason. <laughs> it's the Thousand Isles. <laughs> Well, let's just not go to that specific one. We can go to the 999 <laughs> islands. Yeah, plenty of others. Plenty more islands in the ocean. All right. That is where we are going to bring it to a close. Uh, thank you so very much for playing. Um, Thanks. I, I'm very glad that I finally got to, to, to run 50 Fathoms for a little bit. This uh, I, I really like this setting, and I can see mm. how... How uh, in 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 the actual uh, campaign mode of this, there there there's this whole there's this whole economic side of it where folks can just go around doing stuff with their ship if they want. It's very much an MMO type deal, uh, <laughs> so it's uh, it's very cool. I do see the appeal of it. Um, we're gonna go around and uh, again let folks say uh, any, any any thoughts they have about this session and uh, about this game and uh, where folks can find them. And we shall start with Levi. Hello, I am Levi, Levi is 97 on the Twitters. Uh, this was a lot of fun. I may run this myself again sometime. But uh, if you want to see more of me on a boat, you can tune in Wednesday uh, for Alas for the Awful Sea. I'm very excited Tuesday. for that. For, uh, Tuesday, yes. Uh, for that uh, main campaign finale. Uh, also, if you go to... Uh, uh, Jim's website under game signups. I will be running Demon Gods on the first. I'm very excited for that. And uh, Wednesdays in December, uh, you can find me on Tales of the Grim uh, in Port of the Black Freighter. It's Ways of the Dark, but it's Watchmen. Ooh. Yay! Wow. Very cool, very cool. Very much looking forward to that. Awesome. And Mira. Hi. Um, that was really fun. I've never played 50 Fathoms. I've mostly been a 5e uh, player um, and DM on occasion. Uh, mm -hmm. Never streamed, never played online ever. Um, and I don't have anything going on, but I'm HP Chickisms on Twitter. Uh, it's basically me gushing about Critical Role pretty much always. But uh, 
if, feel free to check me out there and have some fun. I don't have any plans for anything upcoming right now, but we'll see. Awesome. Well, I, I, you would not know that this was your first time. I didn't. I didn't until just now. Uh, so that was very <laughs> cool. Uh, you are welcome back anytime. <laughs> this Thank was you. Awesome. Very cool. Rock. Hey. Hey. Um. So rock and roll on the uh, Twitter and pretty much anywhere you can find somebody on the internet uh, is that's going to be me. Um, but I had a blast. Uh, I've got friends that have played Savage Worlds for like the longest time. They keep saying, hey, you should get into a game. Um, this was this was my first time in a game and uh, I loved it. I loved every moment of it, um, you know, and I mean, uh, mostly because you know again it, it it's it's been on the on on here with uh with you and and you know getting a chance to play with levi and anino and and uh, uh, jillian again uh finally getting a chance to to play with um ozzy and and then uh mira being you know new um just a, a great gamer and player so you know anytime that i'm able to play with great people like this it doesn't matter what game it is. I mean, I know I'm going to have a good time. Yay. Awesome, awesome. Well, uh, that brings us to Anino. How's it going, everyone? Uh, my name is Anino. You can find me on Twitter, at Anino Gaming. Uh, I had a fun time. Um, I always love it when uh, Jim indulges my um, character homages. Um, and he, he didn't object to this one this time. Um, so, uh, no, I, I'm a sucker really for great. Melville. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, it was fun. Um, I was kind of worried for a moment, uh, because I thought about this character and then everyone was like, oh, we're going to be on a salvage ship. And I'm like, damn it. I thought we would go whaling or something. And, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, I had a great time. Um, always happy to, uh, role play on this channel just because, uh, it's always something new, and uh, I always feel like I want to play a game for a more longer campaign. But uh, Jim doesn't have the time for <laughs> for all for all of these long term campaigns. So um, anyway, uh, you can follow me on Twitter. Uh, only thing coming up is uh, this Friday, Black Friday, um, in the evening at around eight PM Eastern time. You'll find me on the Wandering DM. Twitch channel uh, for my character's debut in uh, Cyberpunk Red, where cool. uh, it's actually a sponsored game by Artel Sorian Games, uh, and uh, I will be playing a uh, professional wrestler by the name of Jimenez. So, it should be fun. Yay! Awesome! Can't wait to see that. That's uh, that, that's going to be very cool. I saw their uh, their their initial sort of character set up for some uh, for a couple of the other characters and it's uh, uh, that thing's gonna be lit. That's gonna be great. I just cannot cannot wait. Um, and uh, and now over to Ozzy. Hey. Yeah, I really enjoyed this as well. Uh, first time playing the setting and I want more because this in this is not just the the, the typical pirate setting, but there's mysteries and magic and ripply things underwater and that's exactly my thing um you can follow me on twitter at carhamt uh you can see me again here um uh, tomorrow at 4 p.m eastern which is 9 p.m uh uk time for a um, um invis invisible sun uh, development session so i'm one of the guest players that sort of is going to weave its way into uh, the ongoing campaign uh, on, on Jim's channel. Um, on Friday, I'm going to be on Skagath's channel playing Masks of Nyala Fotep. That's 9 p.m. UK time. And if you're in the UK or London and going to Dragon Meet on Saturday, uh, you can meet me in person and maybe even play a game with me. Very cool. Awesome. Very much uh, and very much looking to looking forward to tomorrow. Also, very much looking forward to. Uh... Other appearances. Thanks again for coming. This was uh, this was great. Uh, I, I I do like the Kraken race quite a lot. Um, and uh, I, I think if I were to actually play this at uh, a campaign of this, I would probably play one of one of the Kraken race. Um, and uh, and finally, Jillian. 
Yeah, I mean, that was, this is a very interesting game. I like I like the mechanics of the dice. It was really interesting. I was nervous at first because like like I had no idea what was going to happen. I was really like ah chaos and everything. <laughs> there was like chaos from the monk apes who are now back in their apearium or apiary. <laughs> <laughs> apiary. <laughs> to me be mad at at Rock's character just for being a just for being a little thief. And he's not supposed to be, but I guess that doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> but to like me just like like shooting this this water god thing, I don't know, that was really cool. This there are no is... honor among thieves. No honor among thieves, exactly. <laughs> but in any case, hi everybody, bye everybody. My name is Jillian. <gasps> you... <laughs> You can you can follow me on my Twitter, which is GforgivenX, for just all the stuff, you know me. Then you can also follow me on GForgiven1 on Twitch, where I do some PS4 variety streams, and I'm just right now currently nowhere, and I'm desperate. <laughs> I need to know what my intention is. <laughs> I have a intention, I'm sorry. It's okay, it'll be alright. I'm glad we were here for you in your moment of desperation. <laughs> It'll be okay. Everything will be all right. <laughs> well, My ribs hurt now. It's okay. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. But uh, that uh, that that leads us back to me. Hi, I'm Jim. Uh, this is my channel. Uh, you can find me at Other Doc on both Twitch and Twitter. My website is Jim, yes, that Jim .com, where you can find my Geek Observation podcast and links to my various other podcasts, audio dramas, writings, and such. I have links down below to my website, Twitter, and YouTube channel. Um, on, uh, on Monday, tomorrow, uh, we, as mentioned earlier, we will be having a development mode of our Invisible Sun campaign, The Edge of Paradox. That's going to be happening at 4 Eastern. Uh, Ozzy will be our first guest. Uh, our first guest player. Uh, months ago, months ago, I, had, I set up to have a bunch of guest players, and finally we're getting them in there. Um, and uh, development session is also an interesting time to come into because I can get more time to, to sort of focus on individual characters, and, uh, and there's a lot of stuff spun out of whole cloth. Granted, that's the case for the whole campaign, but still, um, it's, uh, it's an interesting, more sort of <laughs> rules light or even rules lighter, I guess, uh, thing than uh, what is typically done. So uh, it's, uh, it's going to be cool. Um, normally Monday nights, I am running Deadlands over on Tales from the Grim. Uh, that's not happening tomorrow, for we have uh, holidays coming. But for those of you who like Savage Worlds, you can tune in uh, to that. We are three episodes in on The Road to Desperation, um, and uh, there will be more coming up soon. Um, again, on this channel on Tuesday night, we have the finale of our short campaign of Alas for the Awful Sea, uh, which is more stuff at sea. Uh, <laughs> this month's turned out to be much more nautical than I had planned. Um, that's low fantasy. A lot of, lot of drama and heartache and pain, and it's just delightful. Uh, nautical <laughs> November. It is. This was a nautical November. Um, so tune in for that. Uh, if you want to see, if you enjoyed seeing, if you enjoyed seeing uh, Levi suffering today, then in t tune in Tuesday to see Levi suffer again. He's the captain of that vessel. Poor, poor fella. Um, <laughs> and uh, on uh, again, that uh, brings us back around to Saturdays. We have uh, Invisible Sun. Uh, that's our regular, the regular campaign uh, in the evenings. And uh, then Sunday, one week from today. Uh, Levi will be back again running Demigods. Uh, the, uh, this is a PBTA game, Powered by the Apocalypse game, uh, by Jason, who sometimes appears on Happy Jack's RPG podcast. Um, and, uh, this is, the, we're playing the Quick Start. The, uh, the official, the, the, the full official game is not out yet, but, uh, a new Quick Start just came out, and we're gonna get, take a, take a crack at it. And I'm excited to dig into that. It's very much kind of a, uh, a, uh, an American Gods type deal from my understanding. So it's, we're all playing demigods, so I can't wait. 
Um, so very much looking forward to that. Signups are actually uh, open for that still at the moment. Um, uh, Signups have been going okay. Uh, I'm gonna put it on my website soon. Right now, you can only find the sign up on my Twitter. Uh, it, it's it's there in my in in my list of we recent tweets. Uh, but I will soon, hopefully tonight, I will uh, get that up on the website uh, so that uh, so that folks can sign up for that if they so desire. Um, in either direction, um, I will uh, I will do that soon. Um, and uh, probably we'll be uh, casting that on like, uh, like uh, Tuesday, probably. <laughs> um, so that's uh, when we're setting that up. Uh, Signups are still open for next month's mini campaign, which is going to be Fiasco. We're actually doing three sessions of Fiasco that will be linked in train wreck mode. Uh, so the characters and uh, scenarios will carry over from thing to thing. So it's the first time I've been able to play it in that and I'm really looking forward to it. Signups are still open for that. It's an open schedule for that one. Uh, so there are a bunch of schedule options on the sign-up form there. Um, also signups are still run and th that's, uh, you know, that's that signups just running through tomorrow. So you want to sign up for that, get in on it. Um, Masks also is a game we have signups for. Uh, signups are running through, I believe, December 11th. Um, for, uh, for that, that's going to be a regular recurring campaign, uh, it's a shorter campaign, but still going to be, it's going to be longer than a month, uh, going to be happening in early 2020, going to be happening starting in January, uh, so if you would like, that's a Powered by the Apocalypse game where, uh, we're playing young superheroes, so if you want to come play a young superhero, uh, uh click on that, sign up for that, that's going to be run by, uh, Mole, who was on this channel playing in, uh, in our campaign of, uh, of Bad Streets that we had. Um, and, uh, so I'm very much looking forward to that too. So those are all there. Um, you can, uh, again, uh, either go to my Twitter where you can find the signups, especially for demigods, um, or you can go to, uh, or you can go to jimmyesthatgym.com, click on game <coughs> sign up and it's there, or just go down below here and click on RPG sign up, take you right to the same page. As always, beginners are more than welcome. So, uh, when we hit the end card, it's only now that I look over to the left to see uh, what's available? Um, let's see. I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna go ahead and raid probably uh, Happy Jacks. They're playing. What are they playing? They're playing Traveler. They love Traveler. Um, and uh, so yeah, I think we're gonna go ahead and send a raid over to them. And uh, so we're gonna go say hi to them. Feel free if you wish to hang on and say hi to them with us. That again will be when we hit the end card. In the meantime, folks, thank you very much for watching. Take care, and I shall see you all of a sudden. Farewell.